So are we among, right, allowed to talk, talk amongst ourselves right now about council both? Council is coming to you live from the council chambers and is a public affairs presentation of the Metro no. Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council holds the 17th business meeting of its four-year term and the 10th regular meeting for this calendar year of 2020. Because of concerns concerning the coronavirus pandemic, the council tonight will again conduct its business virtually, operating for a fourth time under emergency rules. Due to those health concerns, the public will not be present tonight, and almost all the 40 members of the council will attend and participate online. Again, the only members here in the council tonight that are here are Vice Mayor Jim Shulman, who will conduct the meeting, and Council Pro Tempore Jeff Syracuse, who will run the session if the Vice Mayor cannot. As large member Bob Mendez, who's chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee, is also present, since he handles a significant amount of legislation the council will consider. Council Staff Director and Attorney John Cooper is here as well, along with a few other staff members. All of us are present are observing the guidelines for social separation, including wearing masks, as we are now in a metro building, and that is now required. The executive order issued by Tennessee Governor Bill Lee allows local government legislative bodies to meet electronically during this time of emergency to handle necessary business. That executive order was recently extended to go through June 30. The council has only a 10-page agenda tonight. That includes three pages of resolutions with less than a page of first reading bills, two pages of second reading ordinances, and four pages of bills on third and final reading. Let's say matters perhaps of most interest tonight are the $2.4 billion metro budget and a separate tax levy bill that includes a 32% property tax increase to fund the spending plan. Both the budget and the tax levy bills are on second reading tonight. Normally, the budget-related bills that are deferred until after the council has its public hearing on the budget and taxes. That public hearing is set for the next council council meeting on June 1st. In another historic first, the public hearing will be conducted virtually on June 2nd. To repeat, we will not, um, and I should have said June 2nd is the day, Tuesday, June 2nd for that day. We do not expect, any, therefore, do not expect any debate or a vote on the budget or tax increase at this meeting tonight. The council for over a week has been holding its own budget hearings with various city departments. Those sessions have been conducted online as well, with four council members working on possible alternatives to Mayor Cooper's budget and tax proposal. They're being vetted by the city's finance department will be a part of the overall debate in June. A couple other bills that have some budget and tax implications tonight. One resolution will, that will bring questions and perhaps debate is RS-2023-18. It would accept a direct allocation from the U.S. Department of the Treasury related to the coronavirus. Metro has been awarded a grant not to exceed $121 million with no cash match required. The grant funds can be used for unbudgeted experiences related to the preparation of, prevention of, and response to the coronavirus pandemic. They have to be incurred and the money has to be spent before G December 30th, 2020. The Cooper administration has not said publicly how it proposes to spend those funds. They cannot be used to fund the operating budget, but council members have been felt, have, have felt left in the dark about this. They want some say-so on how the funds will be allocated. This has created some concerns today when word came out through some news stories that the mayor had appointed a private group to consult with him. The, the members of that group were not announced until late this afternoon. At that time, the mayor said the group would be more helping him how to get more state money involved. And he's fine with the council having his own group to, to look at that and make recommendations back to itself and to the mayor about how the money should be spent. The council will have to approve whatever they decide to do in terms of doing that. So we'll see exactly how that works tonight. There is also another resolution that could bring some questions, although it'll probably be it was approved unanimously in committee and should be approved tonight on the floor. There are RS-2020-315 and RS-2020-316, both are anticip anticipation notes totaling about $360 million. This is something the council has approved the last couple of years to facilitate the flow of Metro spending to coincide with its revenues. But these resolutions include language not included last year. Change would grant the authority to mayor to sell tax notes to one or more financial institutions through a negotiated sale instead of through interfund borrowing. The mayor determines that it's the best interest to do it, he will be able to do it that way. The purpose of the language is to provide flexibility in light of the financial challenges resulting from the COVID-19 outbreak. The mayor would have the authority to approve the interest rates and maturity dates of the notes. Approval of the state director of local finance and the comptroller's office would also be required. Again, because this is new, there are questions and there could be some debate as well. Two other interesting bills regarding the, the coronavirus. One, um, resolution RS-2023-28, we put the council on record as saying we do not, the city would not allow any more um, uh, incentive programs to be approved for local businesses um, for at least a year and not until there are more metrics put together on exactly how those would be given. Also, there's a bill on uh, first reading that'll probably be withdrawn tonight. It's, it's, uh, it's, bill, it's BL 2022-2966. It would set up a special district that's required every time we have one of these major events downtown. This would be for the 4th of July. Uh, fireworks display and celebration. That event was canceled today because of the pandemic situation. Although apparently the fireworks show will still be televised and uh, put out on TV. 
uh, later on in this going further. If you want to follow tonight's meeting as it progresses, you can find the council agenda online as well as the council staff analysis with explanations of the legislation. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov yep. website we into the you. Legislative Information Center. Also be placing the bill numbers on the screen as they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are in the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He'll be gathering tonight's historic fourth virtual council meeting to order. No. I am, I am. <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone, huh? Five little thing blocking the webcam. Start, start my video. So 
um, council members, we are uh, getting started. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. Will all members of the council, as well as the public watching, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation tonight will be brought to us by Pastor Jeff Furtado of the Canal United Methodist Church in Goodlettsville. He is a guest of council member Zach Young. God, in these times of pandemic and change, when we find ourselves as those who wander through the desert uh, looking for what is next, uh, missing the things that were before, we, we know that we do not walk alone. In the same way that you have walked with your people uh, as they left Egypt uh, with your cloud of fire and um, giving them direction, you journey with us now. And in this meantime, we pray that your grace will continue to be with us that you continue to shower us with your love and give us reminders that is, despite all that is happening, you are still in control, that we are not alone in these moments, that we journey not only with you, but we journey with each other. So we pray and continue to hope for the day when all will be well with all your creation. We pray and continue to work for the day when public safety and financial ruin will not be the only choices that we have. We pray and continue to work for the day when all of your people will have homes and housing and poverty and hunger will be things of the past. So remind us of your love. Continue to give us your strength and most importantly, shower us with your wisdom so that we may have the prophetic imagination to cause things into existence that are not yet visible to others, that forges a way forward when others see it no way. Remind us that we are not in total control and those that serve do not serve for themselves, but they are stewards of a power that comes from you. So help us to care for all of your people. Help us to show and to share your love with your creation and help us to, most importantly, give you all of the honor and the praise through the work and the things that we do. In moments when we falter, give us uh, your forgiveness. In moments when we are afraid, give us your courage. In moments when we do not know what to do, continue to endow us with your wisdom. And bless us, God so that we may create a city and a county and a world where all people will know the blessings of your love. All people will be, live in safety and peace with nature, with each other. And all people will share love for you and for others. We lift this to you in the beautiful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. You all may be seated. Um, members of the uh, viewing audience, um, this is our first virtual meeting where you will be able to see and hear the council members. We've been meeting uh, for a couple of meetings, actually several meetings uh, by teleconference, but uh, we have now got video capability. Again, there are very few council members in the chamber, uh, but the council members are um, participating uh, by uh, teleconferencing pursuant to the governor's executive order number 16. 
On matters that require voice votes, we will be checking for those in favor, those opposed, and those who are abstaining to make sure we've got the, uh, the votes correct. On roll call votes, we'll be calling on members uh, one by one. The council members, uh, please uh, remember, uh, keep your microphones muted when you're not actively speaking on a matter. The noise in the background can obviously be very, very loud. Um, please use your request to speak feature explained on in your instructions that you should have on your computer. Please remember that you can be heard and seen tonight. If you have to step away from your computer, that's fine, but know that your camera will still be on. Please remember that you can be heard and seen. And if you have any trouble tonight, please call the support team with the phone number that you have been provided. Um, again, we will, as we've not been doing for the last couple of times, we will not be suspending the calling the roll, but instead, in order to determine who is present for this meeting, I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll. Remember when it is your turn to answer, please unmute and then mute after you have finished. Madam Clerk, um, if you will, let me turn your microphone on. There you go. Madam Clerk, if you will um, call the roll, please. Council Member Mendez. Present. Council Member Hurt. Here. Council Member Allen. Present. Council Member Glover. Present. Council Member Suara. Present. Council Member Hall. Council Member Hall. Council Member Toombs. Present. Council Member Gamble. Present. Council Member Swope. Council Member Swope. Council Member Parker. Present. Council Member Withers. Present. Council Member Benedict. Present. Council Member Benedict is present in the chamber. Council Member Van Rees. Present. Council Member Hancock. <laughs> Present. Council Member Young. Present. Council Member Hagar. Present. Council Member Evans. Council Member Evans. Council Member Bradford. Present. Council Member Roten. Present. Council Member Syracuse. Council Member Syracuse is present in the chamber. Council Member Welsh. Present. Council Member Sledge. Present. Council Member Cash. Present. Council Member O'Connell. Present. Council Member Roberts. Present. Council Member Taylor. Council Present. member, is that Ms. Mr. Taylor? Correct. Present. Council member Hauser. Present. Council member Druffel. Present. Council member Murphy. Present. Council member Pulley. Present. Council member Johnston. Present. 
Council Member Nash. Present. Council Member Vercher. Present. Council Member Porterfield. Council Member Porterfield. Council Member Sepulveda. Present. Council Member Rutherford. Present. Council Member Rutherford, was that a present? Yes, Thank I'm you. here. Thank you. Council Member Stiles. Present. Council Member Lee. Present. Council Member Henderson. Here. Council Member Rosenberg. Here. Council Member Hall. Council Member Swope. Council Member Evans. Council Member Porterfield. Vice Mayor, I have 36 present. Okay. I have four not responding. All right, so council members, uh, there are 36 members present, uh, four not present. We have a quorum, we can continue. Um, now, because of some unexpected circumstances, the minutes of the meeting from May 5th, 2020 are not ready to be approved tonight, so we will take them up at the next meeting. Uh, council member Rosenberg, you are recognized for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion that the May 19, 2020 Metropolitan Council meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and metropolitan government, and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. All right, thank you, Council Member Rosenberg. You've heard his motion. I've got a, a second uh, by Council Member Mendez. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion on uh, the, um, the motion? Uh, seeing none, we are on uh, Council Member Rosenberg's um, motion on, the, uh, on being able to meet electronically. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, opposed no. Any abstentions? The vote is 36 4, uh, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Uh, the motion passes. Uh, Vice Mayor, this is Councilwoman Porterfield. I just wanted you to know that I was on the call. Okay, so we now have 37 members uh, present. Councilmember Porterfield, did you understand what we were voting on on that motion? Yes, sir, I was already on. Okay, so um, again, okay. the vote is 37 for, uh, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? The motion passes. Councilmember Rosenberg, I'm coming back to you. Uh, you're recognized for discussion on the emergency rules. Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so uh, this morning uh, you were emailed uh, by the council office seven um, suggested rules to roll back to their original state. Uh, we have suspended some rules and made some rules changes at the March 17th meeting and the April 7th meeting to reflect our bizarre state. Um, the rules committee suggested seven, uh, or discussed seven potential uh, rollbacks and uh, elected to bring five of them to the floor. Um, so I'm gonna move that we uh, make the following rules changes, which just reinstate the rules that were in place um, back in the old world. Uh, they are uh, number one, reinstituting rule 28, which rule 28 will speak to the public addressing the council uh, with the exception of the monthly comment period, which isn't quite ready yet. Uh, reinstituting the second paragraph of Rule 7, which requires committee action before legislation can be passed. Reinstituting the second to last paragraph of Rule 13, 
which requires officers of legislation to appear before the rules committee, reinstituting the original language of the second sentence of Rule 19, uh, a recommendation from the Planning Commission on PUDs and SPs prior to those being introduced in the council, and reinstituting Rule 27 uh, that creates the announcement period. So I, I move that we uh, make those changes. All right, so Council Member Rosenberg has moved to make changes uh, on the emergency rules. Council Member Mendez has uh, properly seconded those. Um, any discussion? Remember, uh, if you want to be recognized uh, in your I legislate, you would hit request to speak. Anybody wish to speak? All right, we're on Council Member Rosenberg's motion on the uh, changing the emergency rules. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right, uh, Councilman Rosenberg's motion passes 37 4, 0 against, 0 uh, abstentions. Any changes to that? Hearing none, that's the motion. All right, Madam Clerk, we're ready to proceed. Are there any messages from the mayor? No, Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to proceed, but before we get to elections and confirmations, uh, I would like to recognize Council Member Hurt, uh, Chair of the Health and Hospitals Committee, for an update on the current situation in Nashville and Davidson County concerning the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Council Member Hurt, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Thank you so very much. Um, I am uh, reporting this evening that Nashville Davidson County has 4,390 cases that have been confirmed, 230 from 24 hours ago. We had three additional deaths, which makes the total of deaths 46, and we've had 2,975 recovered. For the state of Tennessee, it has been 18,419 confirmed cases with 367 deaths and um, 346,123 have been tested. Um, want to let you know that the heat maps show still that uh, Southeast is the heavily populated uh, confirmed cases in 37211 and 37013. I also would like to announce that the Minority Caucus will be hosting a webinar with the mayor's office on Thursday from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. And uh, I have a very long address for those who may be interested but it's nashville.webx.com forward slash Nashville forward slash on stage forward slash G dot PHP question mark M T I D all caps equal E D four five nine zero D zero B Five nine eight nine three eight one A two E four B C four F five two nine seven three D zero E B. And that is going to be available twenty four hours after the the webinar if you are unable to receive it, but I'm sure you'll be able to call the mayor's office or you can contact me and I can share that information with you. There have been several press releases out uh, with that information on it. And there's one other thing that I would like to share as it relates to COVID-19. I heard from Rock, the uh, Restaurants Opportunity Centers, and they have some major concerns. And their concern is the lack of representation of workers in all of this. 
Business owners, politicians, and corporate attorneys have had numerous private conversations surrounding the plans to reopen, but have not allowed any workers to take part within the conversation. It is their belief that there are issues within the plan that can only be addressed by those individuals who are within that system, but without representation and a voice in the process, they cannot even attempt to find compromises on the rest of the issues. Issues like fundamentally restaurants are not safe to reopen. It is inherently close contact business where workers directly handle things like dirty dishes, glasses, and silverware. The dish rooms are humid and the humidity can carry droplets that spread COVID-19. They're also concerned about the lack of transparency surrounding potential cases in a restaurant without one knowing that they have no idea of the risk that they are taking by being in the restaurant or as an attendee or a, a customer as well as an employee. And I think that they need to have that transparency. There's no real way for the public to know without uh, having that information so they can take precautions. There's another concern about PPE. That who's responsible for providing that? Is it on the workers to have to provide it or will the employees and uh, employers? And one recent webinar at a corporate attorney suggested that businesses could require employees to provide their own mask under the same provisions they can use the required aspects of a uniform, such as a specific style of footwear. Finally, their concern is the recent spike in violence that essential workers have been facing while trying to enforce social distancing measures. They feel unsafe returning to work and now in addition to fearing a virus, they also have to fear their fellow man. This has become an increasingly real fear for national workers, and they saw that recently a couple had been attacked by someone who was disregarding the fears that others have. And they want more than anything for their voice to be heard in this situation. And it also is a concern about workman's comp. If they get sick, will they be able to get workman's comp or is it going to be upon them to have to fend for themselves when they are just trying to do their jobs and they want to be able to keep their jobs if they have to make the decision to be off work. So thank you very much for indulging me and them and hearing their voices and I hope employers were listening and will take that all in consideration and show compassion for their employees. Thank you, Council Member Hurd, uh, for the update. We appreciate it. Um, one other uh, a quick announcement. Uh, I wanted uh, uh, you all to know uh, that uh, our friend and frequent visitor to the chamber, uh, Pastor Enoch Fuzz, uh, is in the hospital. It, uh, it is not related to COVID-19, um, but um, he is in the hospital and um, just wanted uh, Pastor Fuzz to know that our prayers and thoughts are, are with him tonight. And uh, we hope he gets better very soon and uh, uh, we need him back here in Nashville helping us as soon as possible. Um, so we are now moving on to elections and confirmations. Uh, Council Member Rosenberg, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, at rules, we had the entire board of equalization. Of, there were two members who are not, or two appointees who are not available, and we'll be deferring until uh, the first meeting in June. Those are Mrs. Sharon Greaves and Mr. Darwin Pankey. Uh, we considered the appointment of Ms. Brenda Gadd as an alternate member for a term expiring April 1st, 2022. The appointment of Mr. Charles Hankla for a term expiring April 1st, 2022. The reappointments of Ms. Jacqueline Kennedy, Mr. Bob Notstein, Mr. Kamal Saba, and Mr. Derek Starks 
for terms expiring April 1st, 2022. Uh, we voted eight in favor, none against on each of them, and I move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we are ready to vote on those appointments and reappointments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Say no. Any abstentions? Uh, hearing none, I do see uh, Ms. Evans is now on the uh, board. Uh, was she not on your original list? Okay. So Erin uh, Evans is now here. Um, so the vote now is 38. Uh, the vote will be 38 for, zero against, uh, zero abstentions. 38 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, that's the vote. Uh, so um, I want to uh, acknowledge the appointment of Ms. Brenda Gadd as an alternate member, uh, Charles Hankla, um, that's an appointment for term expiring April 1st, 2022. The reappointment of Ms. Jacqueline Kelly, the reappointment of Mr. Bob Notestin, uh, the reappointment for Ms., uh, Mr. Cabal Saba, and the reappointment of Mr. Derek Starks. Uh, thank you all for um, being so much willing to serve. I'm sorry that you can't be down here for this, um, to stand up and have us recognize you, but we certainly do appreciate your willingness to uh, serve Nashville and Davidson County on the Board of Equalization. Um, so um, thank you, and we are now ready to move on to resolutions on the consent agenda. So I'm gonna tell you which ones are on the consent agenda. If you need to bump something, please let me know. Uh, resolution um, RS 2022. A point of order, please. Point of order. Um, who's saying that? Point of inquiry. Point of inquiry. Council Member Henderson. Point of inquiry. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, uh, for asking to be recognized or voting, um, I had understood as we began the call that would be done via I legislate. I, I did have a point of discussion uh, related to um, the Board of Equalization and then just going forward. Um, can you let us know how? Um, we are requesting to speak and how we are voting. So I had understood we were voting by I legislate, but we are now voting by voice. I just want to confirm that from a procedural standpoint, please. So I will check with Mr. Cooper. It's my understanding if you want to be recognized, simply hit your uh, request to speak button. Um, we will be voting by I legislate, but those are on roll call votes. So on voice votes, we can just open the machine and take it by then. We do not have to do it by um, on each vote, we do not have to have you actually register to vote. All right, so that's why we did it that so, way. Only on roll call vote, and then to request to speak, it is still via WebEx. Is that correct? That With is the right correct. Hand icon? What's well, by iLegislate? You hit your request to speak button on iLegislate. Okay, but that is particular to the agenda item. Like I'm, I am not seeing where that is. Uh, or the request to speak, uh, it should be mm -hmm. on your button. Now, what I'm looking at is, um, so I'm talking to the IT people as well. I've got view speaker zero, but I've got two people on the web uh, X, the old system, with their hands raised. Um, so they did not hit the request raised. to speak. They um, actually hit their, um, their, their button to, um, to raise their hand. Okay, so if I had, for um, when you requested discussion on um, uh, the appointments or elections and confirmations, then I should have gone into the view on the agenda item and internal to that, there would be um, requests to speak. Yeah, if you had wanted to speak on any of those appointments, so I held, I checked the view of the speakers, I saw nobody in the queue, and so I went ahead and took the vote. Understood, but I'm, I'm just sharing that I do not have a request to speak button in my I legislate. So, all right, so um, we are um, sure all, will, <coughs> all right, so that. I am uh, now going to check both places to make sure that we've got it. There was no one in the queue to speak, uh, but now I'm checking the second wave, and I've got Councilmember Henderson with her hand up and Councilmember Evans with her hand up. So, um, 
Councilmember Henderson, is there anything else? Uh, I will keep no, an eye sir. on that, and if you wish to speak, just hit the same button, and then I can recognize you that way. All right. And I would, I would just suggest if staff could please um, perhaps, uh, you know, send an email or something particular to our legislate and how that's going to be used uh, this evening, just for clarification purposes. Apparently, I need to. I am in that I legislate, but apparently I need to. I have logged in, but um, I'm, I'm getting some. Uh, text to clarify, but I just wanted, as before we really got into the agenda, for everybody to have the ability to clarify just that. Just open up the council agenda is all you need to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, again, council members, I can hear you uh, speaking. So um, again, uh, you need to be careful on your, um, if you um, hit your, if you are not muted, we can hear you. Um, so, um, okay, council member Henderson, anything else? Okay, got a head shake. So council member Evans, you're recognized. Hey, um, Vice Mayor, apologies since this seems like a good, good time to share that I'm having computer issues uh, with the new laptop, and so I most likely will not be on the iLegislate at all this evening. Okay. So if the clerk could put me down as a voice vote for those appropriate times, I'd appreciate it. Okay, we will watch, and anybody that has problems on their computer, uh, Council Member Evans, sounds like Council Member Henderson, I think Council Member uh, Toombs, Anybody else, if there's a problem, we will uh, make sure on a roll call vote, if you will just raise your hand, we will double check and then we will make sure that you get counted on a roll call vote. Um, all right. So we are ready to proceed. Uh, that took care of the Board of Equalization. We are now ready for the consent agenda. So I am going to go through which measures are on the consent agenda. Um, I have got a resolution RS 2020 259 on consent, resolution 317 on consent, resolution 319 on consent, uh, 320 on consent, 321 on consent, 322 on consent, 323 on consent, 324 on consent, 325 on consent, 326 on consent. 327 on consent and 328 on consent. Okay, let me go through those numbers again. Um, so I have got uh, 2020 259 on consent, resolution RS 2020 317 on consent, 319 on consent, 320 on consent, 321 on consent, 322 on consent. 323, 324, 325, 326, 327, and 328. Does anything need to be bumped? I'm looking, checking both places. Councilmember Suara, you are recognized. Thank you. I would like uh, 327 bumped, please. Well, say that number again. 327. 327. 327 is now bumped. Okay. Resolution RS 2020-327 is bumped off the calendar. Um, anybody else wishing to be heard? I'm checking the board in both places to make sure we don't miss anybody. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to read the, the uh, captions on the consent calendar. Just stay with me. Uh, resolution RS 2020, hold on just a second. Uh, Council Member Nash, you're recognized. Yeah, I'd like to have some discussion over 328 also, please. Okay. Okay, 328 is also bumped. All right. All right. Okay, anybody else? All right, seeing none, here they go. Resolution RS 2020 259 uh, by Council Member Murphy, a resolution recognizing Nashville Repertory Theater's 35th anniversary season. Uh, RS 202317 by Councilmember Mendez, a resolution authorizing the extension of the Metropolitan Government's General Obligation Commercial Paper Program and the amendment of the terms of the credit facility related thereto. Resolution RS 202319 by Councilmember Mendez. This is a resolution approving an amendment number two to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Davidson County Juvenile Court to establish and enforce federal and state mandated child support program guidelines for children born out of wedlock. Resolution RS 2020-320 by, uh, 
by Council Members Mendez, Hager, Hancock, and Stiles. It's a resolution approving an application for coronavirus aid relief and economic security. It's the CARES Act grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan National Arts Commission. Resolution RS-2020-321 by Council Members Mendez and Pulley. Resolution approving a contract between the State of Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services and the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Nashville Fire Department, authorizing the state to pay the Metropolitan Government for emergency transportation services. Resolution RS-2023-22 by Mendes, Pulley, and Hancock. Resolution approving an application for a port security grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Office of Emergency Management to protect maritime, uh, maritime critical infrastructure support overall port resilience and recovery capabilities. RS 202323 by Mendes, Pulley and Hancock. Resolution approving an application for a bulletproof vest grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government acting by the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department to purchase bulletproof vests for law enforcement personnel. RS 202324, Mendes, Henderson, Allen and Stiles. A resolution accepting the terms of a cooperative purchasing master agreement for re refuse and recycling solutions and related products, equipment, and services. RS-2023-25 uh, by Councilmember Mendez, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Nadia Bruce and Brian Rawlings against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $90,000 set amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. A resolution RS-2023-26, Mendez, Henderson, and Allen a resolution approving three amendments to three agreements between the Metropolitan Government and the State of Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation concerning maintenance of closed solid waste disposal facilities. And I believe that's it. That's the end of the consent calendar. Anything else that needed to be bumped off of there? Councilmember Hancock, uh, you recognized? Councilmember Hancock. Thank you, Madam Chair. I had a um, point of order clarification on resolutions 315 and 317. I heard 315 when you were giving the original list, but then I heard 317 when you read them. So I would like to know which one of those or both are on the consent agenda. 317 was on the consent agenda. 315 is not. Super. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Any other discussion before we get into the committee reports? Um, so um, just hold with me. I'm checking both lists. Uh, Council Member Sawara, anything is that from before? Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. It was from before. Sorry. Okay. All right. Just checking. I saw your hand. All right. All right. So committee reports. Uh, I will go to uh, uh, Council Member Mendez, Budget and Finance. Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Budget and Finance Committee um, considered a number of matters on the consent agenda. Um, they were Resolution RS 2020 317, 319, 320, 21, 322, 323, 324, 325, and 326. The committee recommended approval 12 in favor and zero against for each of those. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hancock, Parks, Library, and Arts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We had a few in Parks, Library, and Arts as well. 259, 320, and I think that's all that's on the consent agenda. We voted on four in favor, zero yes on both. All right. Thank you, Council Member. I've got um, uh, Council Member Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. You've got uh, 259. Planning and zoning, voted 15 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Pooley, Public Safety. Public Safety uh, recommended RS 2020-321 for approval, four in favor, zero against. And 322 and 323 recommended for approval, five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Henderson, Public Works. 
Mayor, the Public Works Committee recommended approval of Resolution 324 and 326. Nine in favor, zero against. All right, and Council Member Rosenberg, it looks like your two were bumped off the um, consent agenda, but I'll go to you for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I am double checking. All right. All right, so I've got a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded, the consent agenda, seeing nobody in the queue. All those in favor of the consent agenda say aye. All right, any opposed say no. Any abstentions? Hearing none, I've got a vote of 38 4, 0 against, and 0 abstentions. Any change to that? Then that's the vote on the consent agenda. We'll go back and start taking up the individual resolutions. The first one is Resolution RS 2020 255 uh, by Councilmember Vercher. It's a resolution requesting various metropolitan government departments and agencies to provide a comprehensive assessment of the capacity to deliver public services to the Antioch area of Davidson County. Council Member Vercher, you are recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Committee report. All right. Thank you. Uh, I've got Parks and Library. That would be Council Member Hancock. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Council Lady Vercher was not present at our committee meeting, and so we to defer to the next meeting, June 2nd, four in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, planning and Zoning, Council Member Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning voted again to indefinitely defer this, 15 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Public Safety, Council Member Pulley. Public Safety deferred by rule. All right, uh, Council Member Vercher, I'm gonna recognize you. It looks like it's been deferred by rule, but Council Member Vercher, uh, you're recognized. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Mayor. Is it appropriate for me to uh, to defer it indefinitely? Yeah, that is fine. You can do that if you'd like. Yeah, uh, given everything with the, the city still recovering from the tornado and the, and the pandemic and um, uh, everything that's going on with the budget, we're not going to know staffing levels for, for departments. Um, and some council members have expressed um, that, uh, that this legislation could be burdensome uh, for, for many of the departments. Um, but I just want to be on the record uh, uh, expressing that this legislation is one uh, to move our area toward uh, receiving um, the resources that we need uh, for, the, for the population growth out here. Uh, we all have anecdotal, anecdotal data, data as it relates to um, our needs. And this legislation was to move us more in uh, a direction of making decisions out here as it relates to uh, growth utilizing data. So with that, um, I, will, I will bring this legislation back at, at a future date. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, so Councilman Vercher is moving to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nobody in the queue. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to defer indefinitely say aye. Uh, any any opposed say no. Uh, any abstentions? Councilman Withers, uh, does your cat want to abstain on this vote? Yes, please. Okay. So the vote is 38 um, for the motion, zero against, zero abstentions. Uh, any corrections to that? Uh, hearing none, that is the vote. Thank you, Council Member Vercher. We're now on Resolution RS 2020-308 by Council Member Glover. This is a resolution requesting credit of all property and business taxes paid in advance or coming due for any period that a business or person requiring such is unable to operate or work in their business due to government shutdowns caused by the COVID-19 outbreak. Council Member Glover, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I have a late filed amendment and I tried to get in rules, uh, but uh, I didn't have an invite on that one. So we were trying to get me in. I know I missed it, but uh, with that, uh, it's a late file because we actually amended the bill 
yesterday in budget and finance. All right, Councilmember so Clever, let me go to you for a second, or however I need to do this. Let me get let me get the committee report first from Councilmember Mendez, okay. and then I'll come back to you. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. The Budget and Finance Committee recommended approval five in favor, four against, and three not voting. All right, thank you, Councilmember. Okay, Councilmember Glover, uh, you're recognized. All right, so so we have a late filed amendment. It will require suspending the rule, and uh, I was unable to get into. Uh, rules and confirmation this afternoon. Uh, I could hear it, but I couldn't get into it. So that being said, uh, I, you know, with that, I'll, I'll, uh, I would ask that we suspend the rules. Okay. So I'm going to call on Councilmember Rosenberg, but I, I don't think uh, Councilmember Rosenberg, did you were you able to take up that late filed amendment, Councilmember Rosenberg? Uh, we were, Mr. President. Even though the rule has still been suspending, required the sponsor to be in there. We discussed it a little bit about the discussion in budget yesterday, and nobody expressed concern. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Council Member Glover is moving um, to suspend the rule so he can get his amendment before you. Uh, do you need to say any other explanation about what the amendment does before I see if there's any objections? Well, I think it might be critical if we could have Mr. Cooper uh, explain what the amendment changed in this, because there was some concern in budget and finance, and I felt like this this dealt with it, and it should, so you know, subdue any any uh, uh, worries. So, with that, Mr. Cooper, please. Mr. Cooper. Yes, the amendment makes it clear that uh, Metro is not committing to refund any um, credits, uh, rent credits that landlords make, and unless we have the funding to do it, and that's a legally. Uh, permissible use of those funds. All right, so you've heard an explanation. So Councilmember Glover is it needs to move to suspend the rules I to will. get it before you I tonight. Will. All right. I is move. is there any objection? I can see I can see or you can uh, unmute your microphones. Any objections to the suspension of the rules? Uh, Councilmember Bradford uh, you've got your button pushed. Do you want to be, uh, are, are you objecting to the suspension? I am, Vice Mayor. Okay, so there's one, uh, one on the board. Uh, anybody else? All right, seeing none, there's only one objection. So, uh, Council Mayor Glover, um, the, uh, you are uh, entitled to proceed with your amendment. Proceed ahead. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I will move the amendment, please, sir. All right, so uh, Council Member Glover has moved his amendment. Uh, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the amendment? Nobody in the... Uh, Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, just a little clarification on that amendment. Uh, uh, I think it was stated that the amendment states that Metro is not responsible for paying uh, creditors, taxes, in, in, unless they have the money, unless we have the money. And just a little bit more clarification, if you can, on that explanation of the amendment. Council Member Glover. Uh, Vice Mayor, would it, be, would it be appropriate, please? I would like Mr. Cooper to answer that, because he wrote the amendment today in order to make sure Metro would not be on the hook if no money is available. Uh, Mr. Cooper. So the original version of the resolution included language stating uh, basically encouraging landlords to provide a credit to be refunded by Metro to those landlords. And what the amendment does is encourage landlords to provide the credit and request that Metro provide a refund if funds are available and if the funds can legally, legally be used for that purpose. All right, Council Member Gamble. Thank you. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right, I'm checking. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Uh, thank you so much, Vice Mayor. My question uh, to the sponsor is, Are you? is there any consideration to um, extending this to residents who may need assistance with their uh, property taxes as well, who may also be out of work? All right. Councilmember Glover. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. This one deals with small businesses uh, and the employees there. So, I mean, I think it would require a, a different resolution. It, this one does not. And, uh, you know, we amended it yesterday with budget and finance that, to, to deal with the business aspect of it only. So uh, this one does not deal with residential or anything in that nature. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Councilmember Porterfield, back to you. Thank you. All right. Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, my concern with this is kind of piggybacking on Councilmember Porterfield's concern is we're just singling out small business owners who have lost revenue because of the current situation, but we're not making any um, adjustments or any anything to help our property taxpayers other than raising their property taxes. Some of our residents, they've been out of work and, not, and they don't have the money. So if we're going to be helping small businesses in this way, would the sponsor be um, also submitting a resolution at a later time to provide similar benefits for residents? All right. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, I'm co-chairing the Small Business Task Force for uh, the council and for the city. And so I, that's what I've been focused on in this arena. I think any of us could certainly uh, file that. Uh, do I plan on it? No, because uh, all, I'm, all I'm doing here is just my portion as the co-chair of the Small Business Task Force. All right, back to you, Council Member Bradford. That's all, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Council Member Suara. You're recognized. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we all understand that this is just uh, a resolution just to show support for the business committee, our community. It is not enforceable. There is a part of it that talks about funding property taxes. We cannot do that by state law. Uh, um, and so just so that we all understand and then the people listening know that we can fund property taxes. The rent are part of it. I'm glad that we got the amendment to clarify that language, but it's more just like a gesture to show that we are standing with them, but it's not something that is enforceable, at least at this time. All right. Thank you, Council Member Suara. I've got uh, Council Member Nash. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I do applaud the intent and the, and the uh, well-wishing uh, of, of our small businesses, but I, I'm a little afraid that this is kind of a carrot we're setting out there, kind of maybe we can do this, and then we're going to get people wanting to, to count on it, and, and uh, we all know that given the city's financial situation right now, it's very unlikely to happen. Now, that said, we've also got a lot of federal money coming to us that is going to be spread through small businesses, through individuals, and I, I really think that's probably the better process to use and, 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 uh, and not, uh, not put this uh, resolution forward at this time. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Nash. Uh, Councilmember Van Rees, you're recognized. task force or on behalf of the small business task force no. is this was this voted on by that task force is something that they wanted you to bring to us council member glover council member glover no ma'am no ma'am i did this one on my own because it is non-binding uh this merely if something does open up and i think it's something that points to what councilman nash said if something does happen to open up then it's just a window but it's non-binding and we certainly are not binding the city to any cost at this point. But if down the road there's an opportunity to, I certainly want to try to take advantage of it because I'm just talking to tons of small businesses every day that are, and I know people are hurting. I know, I, I know all of that. Um, but small businesses that I'm speaking with are hurting very badly. So it's merely a situation where we can say, yes, if we have funds available, if, it, if it's something that's possible down the road, this just merely positions us to say we as a council support our small businesses. Councilmember Van Rees. I, I, 
appreciate I appreciate that. I, I, I'm glad that I gave you the opportunity to clarify that this was not on behalf of the task force, but but your own uh, opportunity. And I appreciate the intent. All right. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Council Member Evans. I'd like to call the question, please. Okay. So the previous question has been called. Um, we are voting on the previous question. Uh, we're not even voting yet on the. Um, I think we're on the amendment still. Okay, so we are not voting on the amendment. This is just the previous question to get to the amendment. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Against, say no. Aye. Any abstentions? All right, previous question prevails 38 4, 0 against, 0 uh, abstentions. Any corrections to that? All right, so uh, the previous question prevails. We are now voting on the amendment. This is the late filed amendment that was allowed in. Um, we are voting on that amendment. Um, we will try by voice vote first. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. If you're opposed to it, say no. Any abstentions? All right, so I've got the vote 38 for the amendment, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? All right, that's the vote. Uh, Councilmember Glover, you're on your bill as amended now. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's your resolution as amended. Sorry. Yes. I move this non-binding resolution as amended, please, sir. All right. So Council Member Glover has moved its, its resolution RS-2020-308 as amended. A proper motion. I heard a proper second. Any discussion on uh, the resolution as amended? I've got people now back in the queue. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm confused by this resolution a bit. It's saying that we shouldn't charge business property tax, but nothing about individuals. So doing this would shift the tax burden heavily towards individuals and away from businesses, including corporations, which I don't think this is a statement that we want to make. I know my constituents certainly don't want to see more of the tax burden on individuals instead of businesses. Um, the only other way to read it is that we're against property taxes in general, which makes things like stopping crime and fighting fire and teaching children awfully tricky. Um, it's confusing because people who read the headlines about this will think that we can do something about it, for better or worse, and we can't. Um, most businesses carry business insurance, which includes property damage section, and the property damage section isn't about physical damage, it's about non-use of your property. And there's usually an exception for molds and bacteria, but not for viruses. So folks who are taking insurance companies to court for not getting uh, insurance money back due to lost, uh, lost income are, are filing suits and, and for that reason. So there's an opportunity for a lot of these businesses to recover their lost income. So that's just, this, if we want to make a statement that we stand with small business, let's make a statement that we stand with small business, not say that we think individuals should pay all of the taxes and tax bill. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Councilman Rosenberg. Let me remind council members that if you're not speaking, mute your, um, please mute because we can hear the background noise. All right. Uh, council member Welsh, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I have um, several concerns about this bill, but one, this resolution, excuse me, um, but one question I would have about it, um, though I know it's non-binding, is, is there any definition in this resolution about what constitutes a small business? Um, I think that we've seen on the federal level with the PPP program that uh, that definition is somewhat fluid. Um, and um, I think it's very important that even if this is a non-binding resolution, that what is a small business and who would actually receive the benefit of a resolution like this, should the money become available as the amendment stated, it would be limited to small businesses. All right. That's I'm actually small businesses. I'm going to uh, uh, send that question to Council Member Glover. Uh, you're recognized. Make sure you unmute. Councilmember Glover, you're uh, mute. There you go. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that, Vice 
freshman year. So, I mean, to, to answer your question, no, there's not a guideline to it. Uh, and and to, to think that we would shift any tax burden to individuals versus, versus businesses, it would not. Uh, that's why we amended it yesterday in budget and finance. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, I'll admit it, it's a gesture saying we support, as the council, the small businesses who, <laughs> frankly, um, create countless numbers of jobs for us here in, in Nashville. And so uh, from that standpoint, you know, what is the definition of a small business? It could be somebody who, who is themselves, a, you know, a, a, a 1099, a sole proprietor. It could be an LLC. It could be a, you know, a, a, a small corporation, an S corporation. Um, there's a wide variety of small businesses. So to try and get that defined with it, when I know that it is non-binding, this is simply a move. This is for us to say, yes, if money becomes available, we want to support the small businesses, which ultimately does support the employees or the residents of Nashville. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Councilmember Welsh, any follow-up? Uh, no, I appreciate that sentiment very much, um, but I still feel like it is a slippery slope to not have a very clear definition of what would constitute a small business um, if and when money became available for something like this. Um, I think we've also seen through the COVID pandemic that the job creators are actually, um, we the people are spending money in the economy. So um, I just think that it's very important that we have those definitions very, very clearly laid out so that we have a uh, standard by which we judge the implementation and um, the follow through on any one of these resolutions, non-binding or not. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. We have to call the question, please. <laughs> Council Member Evans says, uh, call the previous question. We are voting on the previous question, not the resolution as amended. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Any abstentions? No. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Was that a no? Yeah. No. Yeah. To, uh, no, Jennifer Gamble. Okay. Jennifer Gamble has said no. Anybody else? Uh, Council Member Porterfield says no. Any abstentions? All right. And I believe I also now see Council Member Swope. Council Member Swope. Um, so uh, he is now um, uh, present. So it's 37-4. Two against, zero abstentions. 37 for, two against, zero abstentions on the previous question. Previous question prevails. We are on resolution RS 2020 uh, 308 as amended. We are voting on that. Uh, we'll try by voice vote. Again, RS 2020 308 as amended. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 All right, any abstentions? I abstain. Yes, I abstain. Okay, so we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to go on the board. So, Madam Clerk, uh, can you get the board prepared to go on the vote? Um, what was it? Uh, uh, it's, uh, the, the clerk uh, is taking care of that. All right, so um, is there some indication of when she's ready to go? I'm here, Vice Mayor. Uh, Madam Clerk, are we ready to uh, open up the machines? I'm working on that now. Okay. Uh, now, there are, uh, let me make sure I've got this before we vote. We have got a couple of members who um, we're going to have to call out them individually. Okay. So, uh, Council Member Toombs is one. Uh, Council Member Evans is one, and Council Member Henderson. Anybody else with the inability to use I legislate? I think I'm one too, sir. Uh, Council Member Lee? Okay. Glover. Any, Glover? Okay. So Glover. I have got. Hager. Council Member Vircher, anybody else? Hager. Council Member Hager? Yeah. I thought we had taken away your vote. I'm sorry. No, there he is. I see him down there. All right, so I've got Council Member Evans, Council, Council Member, Roberts. Say, somebody else? 
Roberts. Wait a minute. Who else? Who else? I can't. I couldn't hear. Roberts. Okay, Councilmember Roberts. All right. Anybody else? All right. Let me make sure I've got the list because we'll have to call them out separately. Councilmember Evans, Councilmember Henderson, Councilmember Toombs, Councilmember Lee, Councilmember Glover, Councilmember Vercher, Councilmember Hager, and Councilmember Roberts. Am I missing anybody? Um, uh, Vice Mayor, this is Councilwoman Henderson. Councilmember Henderson, you recognize. Yeah. I can now vote via I legislate. Um, I have figured out the quirk, um, and I wanted to encourage staff and others. Um, I think if folks had a similar challenge, um, other folks could perhaps get on to I legislate, if not all of us, because um, you know this, this meeting is going to be long if we're going to have to vote via I legislate and roll call and so on and so forth. So right. I can now vote via I legislate. All right. So I would just have to reach out and help others do the same. Thank you. All right. So we're pulling Council Member Henderson off that list. Um, all right. So we are on the on the resolution RS 202308 as amended. So, um, Madam Clerk, if you will open up, open up the machines, uh, but before we close them, we will have to take an ind independent roll call of the people who have, are not able to vote by our legislate. Madam Clerk, are you ready? Yes, I've just started the machines. Okay. So the machines are open. You have the ability to vote by I legislate if you would do that. Mr. President, um, Mr. President, I can vote now. Council Lady Roberts. Council Lady Roberts is off the list. She's voting. Uh, Ms. Mayor, I can vote now too. Council Member Hager is off the list. Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready to um, close the machines and then we'll take these other votes as well. Uh, Vice Mayor, with this system, rather than uh, close the machines, I plan on going through the entire list and announcing all persons' votes. And so I will come upon anybody who hasn't voted, whether they were on our list or not. Okay, so you're going to go through everybody on the council and check their vote. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. All right, so you're going to be able to call anybody else on this list to make sure everybody's covered. That's right. Are you okay? Are you ready to proceed? I am. Okay, council members, let me make sure you know what we're doing. So, uh, Madam, the, the clerk is going to call everybody's name and confirm your vote. All right, and then she'll give us a total at the end. Madam Clerk, you're recognized. Councilman Mendez voted no. Council Member Hurt voted yes. Council Member Allen voted yes. Council Member Glover, how shall I record your vote at your resolution? Yes. Councilmember Suara has abstained. Councilmember Hall is marked absent. Councilmember Toombs, how shall I record your vote? No. Councilmember Gamble abstains. Councilmember Swope votes yes. Councilmember Parker votes no. Councilmember Withers votes yes. Councilmember Benedict votes no. Councilmember Van Rees abstains. Councilmember Hancock Yes. Council Member Young? Yes. Council Member Hager? Yes. Ca Council Member Evans, how shall I record your vote? Yes. Council Member Bradford? No. Council Member Roten? Abstain. Syracuse? Abstain. Council Member Welsh? No. Council Member Sledge? Abstain. Council Member Cash? Yes. Council Member O'Connell? No. Council Member Roberts, how shall I record your vote? I, I voted yes. Okay. Council Member Roberts votes yes. Correct. Council Member Taylor, no. Council Member Hauser, yes. Council Member Druffel, yes. Council Member Murphy, no. Council Member Pulley, yes. Council Member Johnston, yes. Councilmember Nash, no. Councilmember Vercher, how shall I record your vote?
Councilmember Vercher. No. Okay. Councilmember Council Vercher votes no. Thank you. Councilmember Porterfield, no. Sepulveda, no. Rutherford, no. Stiles, no. Councilmember Lee, how shall I record your vote? No. Council I vote no. Thank you. Councilmember Henderson, no. Councilmember Rosenberg, no. That's everyone except Councilmember Hall, Vice Mayor, who is absent. Okay. Madam Clerk, do you, have, do you have a total? Yes, Vice Mayor. We have 15 votes yes, 18 votes no. And seven, seven abstentions. I've got a 15 yes, 18 no, seven abstentions. Any corrections to that? Uh, Six abstentions and one absent, Vice Mayor. Say it again, Councilmember Rosenberg. There are six abstentions because there's one member absent. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, is that correct? I assume it is. This doesn't calculate that, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would have to count it manually. All right. Um, so I was doing it manually as well. That's what I came up six. with. Six? Yes. Six All right. Abstentions. Six one. abstentions. All right. So 15 yes, 18 no's. Six abstentions. Good catch, Councilmember Rosenberg. I wasn't all that good in math. That's why I went into the law. Um, the resolution fails um, on, um, on the vote. 15, 4, 18 against uh, six abstentions. All right, so uh, we move on to um, uh, resolution RS 2020 315 by Councilmember Mendez. It's a resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed. 600, <clears throat> excuse me, $613 million in an aggregate principal amount of tax anticipation notes of the Metropolitan Governor of Nashville and Davidson County. Councilmember Mendes, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, committee report first, it went to one committee, Budget and Finance. Um, there, the committee recommended amendment one, 12 in favor, zero against, and the um, resolution as amended, also 12 in favor, zero against. All right, so Councilman Mendes, you're recognized on your resolution. I'll um, move approval with an explanation. Okay, I uh, got a, a motion to approve, properly seconded. You're on your resolution. And uh, uh, I, I, I'll give the explanation and move the amendment. Okay. Um, so there was a, a long discussion at Budget and Finance. We might have talked a half hour about this yesterday. Tax anticipation notes are something that um, we, we do every year. Um, the dollar amount is higher this year than previous years because of the ongoing financial crisis. Um, but this basically has Metro borrowing um, from certain funds that have liquid cash assets into the general fund in the beginning of the fiscal year, and then those funds are re repaid um, back um, once property tax money is received by the end of the fiscal year. Um, it's, uh, we're required by state law to, um, uh, to make sure they get repaid by the end of the fiscal year. Comptroller is aware of this and is fine with what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, so that's uh, generally what um, this resolution does. And now I'll move the amendment and talk about what the amendment does. All right, so I've got a, a motion to approve the amendment properly seconded. Councilor right. Mendes, you're on your amendment. All right, the, um, unlike previous years, the resolution this year added a new feature which allowed the mayor and finance department to um, sell these tax anticipation notes to third party financial institutions. And um, it, it was written originally to be fairly liberal about what terms uh, the mayor could agree to. Basically, it would be whatever terms the mayor felt appropriate. This amendment um, limits the interest rate um, to no higher than 3%. Uh, that was a result of a negotiation over the weekend. So uh, the most important things about a note are what's the amount, what's the term, what's the rate, um, we know the amount because it's um, in the resolution, the term, they have to be repaid inside the same fiscal year, and now there's a, a maximum rate on here. 
um, there was a lot of discussion in, in budget and finance about the reason um, for adding the future to be able to sell to outside parties. And, and frankly, that's uh, due to the fact that um, because of the ongoing fiscal crisis um, and uh, not having um, as much cash as we usually do um, at this time of year, um, it, they, the finance might need to go outside of government funds uh, for, um, they think, uh, some, not very much, but some of the $613 million. After we talked this uh, round and round in finance, covering it from a lot of different angles, um, we approved the amendment and the resolution. All right. So, all right, so uh, thank you, Councilman Mendez. So Councilman Mendez, again, has moved the amendment to RS-2023-15, properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Council Member Swope. Thank you, call the question. <laughs> All right, um, so uh, thank you, Council Member Swope. There's a blue thing in front of your face, so I can't see you. But I did hear something about call the question. So the previous question has been called. Uh, the previous question has been called. We're on uh, the amendment. Um, so um, we're going to vote on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Okay, so the vote is 39-4, uh, zero against, zero abstentions. Any questions with that? Uh, then we're, we're now on the, uh, that was on the previous question, we're on the amendment, okay? So um, we are now voting on the amendment. This is amendment to RS-2023-15. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Any, uh, uh, any opposed say no? Any abstentions? Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Amendment passes. Councilor Mendes, you're on your resolution as amended. Move the resolution as amended. Okay. Got a motion properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have had a hard time kind of reconciling some of the information that is in council analysis, the budget and finance discussion. I guess one thing that's unclear to me here on this resolution, or yeah, this resolution as amended is, what are the implications, right? I understand. Um, so, uh, Council Member uh, O'Connor, we're having a little trouble hearing you. If, if you have your microphones uh, unmuted and you're not speaking, make sure you mute them back, okay? Check. Uh, and if you're not speaking, then please mute. All right. Thank you. Council Member uh, O'Connell, you're recognized again. Now we can't hear you, Council right, Member. You. There you go. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. I got you. Okay. Um, the the biggest question I have here is about the implications for the budget. I mean, I guess we know, obviously, Councilmember Mendez spoke to the fact that this is a lot. Um, it is more than what we did last year. This is a new requirement by the state. But from a cash flow standpoint, I guess a couple questions. Is there a ceiling? Does this have implications for the operating budget? Um, if we wanted to come back and do um, you know something that would expire within this fiscal year or later, do we have capacity to do that? I guess I just want to understand the implications as we work to pass this, um, what we can know about what's possible as we plan for the budget discussion that is upcoming nearby. All right, Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, well, I, I can relate, uh, we, we talked about that at length yesterday. Um, it's an important question. So last year, um, the TANs that were approved were in the range of 450 million. Um, and, and those were all handled through internal funds. And uh, finance um, estimated that they'd be able to cover at least that much internally. Um, so the, the balance um, to go outside of government, um, uh, you know, ballparking um, wouldn't be 
Um, the finance told us yesterday, um, uh, it, at most it would be the difference between the 613 for this year and the approximately 450 for last year. And so the question is whether the operating budget can accommodate the interest on that difference there, uh, 150 million at, at the most, according to finance, um, uh, over a year. And the answer from finance was that yes, um, that they intentionally build um, uh, a little bit of a cushion into debt service funds every year to make sure that any um, uh, short-term capital spending, whether it's commercial paper or otherwise, um, can be accommodated without having to um, get the, the, um, that line item perfectly predicted to the penny. So bottom line is finance, um, in response to this question yesterday, said that there would be enough um, uh, room in the budget to make sure that if there is a need to go to outside sources, the interest can be paid. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you. I appreciate that explanation. I think there's also this question of does it give us any additional capacity uh, should we choose uh, and well, currently the recommended budget does it give council the option uh, to consider using more of this capacity, even whether or not it's this fiscal year. Council Member Mendez. I, I think we can ask Mr. Cooper to confirm, but that would be uh, flatly inappropriate under state law to be able to, to do that. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Okay. Correct. All right. Mr. Cooper says correct. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Uh, your uh, mic is, um, you're muted. Council Member Sledge, let's see. Are you, can you get me now? Now we can hear you. Okay, great, sorry. It's just, um, this question may be for Mr. Cooper. Um, we got a cash flow analysis provided to us by finance today regarding well, it included the TAN repayment schedule. And I'm trying to confirm what that schedule is because I think in finance yesterday, we discussed that these had to be paid back. My understanding from my notes was June of 21, essentially the end of the next fiscal year. What I can tell from the cash flow analysis that we were provided is that it looks like we're making two repayments, one in December of 20 and the second larger one in February of 21. Can you clarify or can somebody clarify when these repayment notes are due versus when we might be repaying them? Uh, Mr. Cooper? I believe that Tom Edelman is actually on the, the call. He was going to join in case there were questions about this. Mr. Edelman, are you on the call? All right. So, uh, Mr. Edelman, did you um, did you hear the question? I did. Uh, actually, Council Pledge, if you look at the uh, the spreadsheet that, that had the, uh, the payback, the first payback for the external borrowing would be starting uh, ramp up uh, June, July, and August. The first payment back would start in October, and the final payment being uh, February. Councilmember Sledge, could you hear that? Yeah, I, I heard that. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the sheet as Mr. Edelman was saying. So essentially, we would plan. I, I want to make sure that I'm distinguishing plan versus requirement. It sounds like we would plan to start making those payments in October, finishing them in February of 21. But Mr. Edelman, I think what you told me from, or told finance today is that we just have to pay them back at the end of the fiscal year. Is that is that correct from a requirement standpoint? That is correct from a requirement standpoint. Okay. And as these are tax anticipation notes, as the tax come in, uh, the payments come in for the taxes, then we will, the, this cash flow that, that generated this spreadsheet says that beginning in October, we can start paying those back. So as soon as we pay those back, we stop those funds, stop paying the interest. So uh, the quicker we pay them back, the less interest there will be especially on the external bond. Understood. Okay, I, I think that answers it. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Thank you Council Member Sledge. Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. Right here. 
Thank you, Chair. So I, we talked about this yesterday, and one thing I want to point out is that the reason why we need to do this is be, and I support it, is because we just don't have the savings available. So, you know, just like in my household budget, if if I only have a couple of days cash flow in order to make the bills, I have to borrow something in order to make the bills. So I just want to point out this is necessary for us, unfortunately, and hopefully we're able to uh, resolve this ahead. But in the meantime, we do need to do this, and it's important to me, and I support it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Benedict. I'm looking for anybody else in the queue. Nobody else in the queue. Uh, we are ready to vote on um, Resolution RS-2020-315 as amended. Um, we'll try it by voice vote. All those in favor of 2020-315 as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions on 2020-315 as amended. Any corrections to that? That's the vote. Passes as amended. Uh, resolution RS-2020-316. Uh, by Councilmember Mendez, a resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $17 million in the aggregate principal amount of tax anticipation notes of the Metropolitan Government. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Thank you. This one also went to Budget and Finance, uh, which recommended approval of an amendment and the resolution as amended, both 12 in favor, zero against. With that, I'd uh, move approval with All an right. explanation. All right. So we've got to get the amendment on correct, right? So uh, there's a motion on the amendment. Uh, properly second. Back to you on the amendment. All right. So um, this is uh, similar but a little bit different to the last one. Um, these are uh, referred to as FEMA TANS. Um, instead of borrowing for next fiscal year, this is $17 million um, for the current fiscal year. And again, this is moving money from certain metro accounts to other metro accounts. Um, and uh, one difference is that instead of um, them having to be paid back by the end of this fiscal year because they relate to um, a declared emergency under state law they're allowed to carry over um, uh, into the next year there was discussion in finance about how they could be carried over under state law for as long as three years the intention of finance department is to pay them back during the next fiscal year um, this amendment like on the last one um, caps the interest rate if it ends up uh, that these are sold to outside parties okay so you've heard an explanation of the amendment there was a motion properly seconded uh, seeing nobody in the queue we're ready to vote on the amendment uh, we're on the amendment on 2020-316. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right. Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Amendment passes. Councilmember Mendes, you're back on your uh, resolution as amended. Move the resolution as amended. All right. So um, proper motion, proper second. Uh, we are on 2023-16 as amended. Seeing nobody on the queue, we're ready to vote. We're on 2023-16 as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Right. Bill passes as amended, 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? That's the vote. 2023-16 as amended passes. We're now on Resolution RS-2023-18 uh, by Mendes, Hancock, and Stiles. It's a resolution approving a mayoral conditional approval and acceptance of a local government coronavirus relief fund grant from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to the Metropolitan Government acting by through the Metropolitan Nashville Finance Department to respond to the public health emergency caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Councilman Mendes, you're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, before we do that, um, I'm getting a, a few text messages um, telling me about uh, sound issues when I'm talking. And if we could just uh, take a, a chance, could, could you ask Council Member Henderson to describe for Slade 
what she's hearing and, and maybe we can try to address it. Councilmember Henderson, can you, um, I've got his microphone on. Councilmember Henderson, can you tell us what's going on with the, with the uh, sound? Thank you. Now you're muted. You have to go back. Okay. Council, there you go. Okay, I am not an audio technician. I'm merely speculating. I'm just trying to kind of assess what's happening when we're muted and unmuted. I'm happy to text with Slade. I was just doing a little um, help, trying to do some troubleshooting. So um, again, I, I don't purport to be an expert on this, but it just uh, uh, I'll, I'll confer with Mr. Hurd. Thank you. And and Mr. Hurd, um, just if you're going back with some folks on that. My WebEx is not connected sound in any way. I got the audio, the, the video on, but, but no sound at all. Okay, Councilman Mendes, you're recognized. All right, thank you. Um, on uh, resolution 318, that um, was recommended um, for approval, um, both an amendment and the resolution as amended by budget and finance, um, 12 in favor, zero against. With that, I'd like to um, move 318 and then move the amendment. Okay, so uh, Council Member uh, Toombs, I think, is on the amendment. Are you on the amendment as well? I am, but Council Member Toombs can move it. All right, so uh, let's take the amendment first. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized on an amendment to RS 2020 318. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, move for approval of the. All right, so I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Uh, back to you for an explanation, or I can refer to Mr. Cooper. Council Member so, Toombs? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep, gotcha. Yeah. So this amendment, as we all know, there's been a lot of um, economic despair due to um, situations surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, a lot of our residents and, and biz small business owners have really been hurt financially. And this $121 million is a very large amount of money that could really uh, provide some much needed assistance in our city. And it's very important that the council be at the front end of uh, how that money is dispersed so that we can be sure that it's going to the appropriate people uh, that need it the most. And so this is just saying, this amendment is saying that none of that money will be spent without a plan uh, first being approved by the council. And so it's just clarifying um, that no money will be spent until there's a plan approved by the council. All right, thank you, Council Member Toombs. Council Member Hancock, you're recognized. Um, I was a bit nervous with this amendment at first when I read it because I am confident that the mayor's office is serving our city well and that the money that they are currently spending and was detailed in the letter he sent out to the council um, was appropriately spent. However, he is in support of this amendment um, and this resolution and um, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that because there's nothing like having a leader of our city saying you know, we, well, why not? Let's have more transparency. So I'm in support of this. All right. Thank you, Councilman Hancock. Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor, and uh, thank you um, to the sponsors of this legislation. I think it's very important that uh, our council is on the forefront um, representing our communities and having conversation around where this money is going. Uh, we've seen some community organizations uh, start that conversation um, through social media, through various emails that we've uh, received, and uh, it's very evident that our communities and the people uh, of, this, the, of this great city want to have a voice in how this money is being spent and they deserve to have a voice in how this money is being spent. So allowing the council uh, that opportunity will, will give us the opportunity to then work with community members. So thank you again for your leadership. I support this legislation and I ask my colleagues to do the same. Thank right. you. Thank you, council member. Council member Bradford, you're recognized. Council Member Bradford. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm very much in support of this amendment and this resolution. I believe that we as a body as council should have a say in how these funds are distributed. And also as council, we can ensure that the community and certain um, areas of our city can have a, have a voice and have some uh, say in how these funds are distributed. So again, I support both this amendment and this resolution. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, 
So, Councilmember Suarez, we had difficulty hearing you. You've got um, an echo of some sort. Um, um, uh, it's it's still you've got a major echo going on, so it's difficult to understand. So you may, uh, you're, uh, you're talking through, um, you're on the WebEx board, but you may have your microphone turned on on both places. I'm trying to figure that one out. I'm looking for some IT help. Hmm? Okay, Council Member Suarez, we're going to give you a call to see if we can fix it. Or do you have a question or were you in support of the measure? Council Member Suarez? So you were in support of the measure? Yes. Okay. Okay. I've got that part. All right. They're going to give you a call in just a minute to see if they can figure out um, what's going on with your um, microphone. So before we, uh, before we get to anything, I want to make sure, did you have any questions about this measure or were you just speaking in support? Don't want to, don't want to take a vote until you're ready. Council Member Suara? Um, well, okay, so I'm looking at you. Are you okay with proceeding ahead with the vote? If you would, just nod your head and I can tell. Uh, I think you've got your, was that your hand up and saying you're ready to proceed? Got it, okay. So um, as Vice Mayor, I am certifying that her hand is up and that she is ready to proceed. I've got Council Member Johnston, you are recognized. Previous question. Previous question has been called. We're on the previous question. Um, so um, uh, all those, we are not voting on the amendment yet. We are simply voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? No. No. Okay. Who was? Uh, who said no? That was Councilwoman Stiles. Councilmember Stiles says no on the previous question. Any abstentions? The vote is 38-4, one against, and zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Previous question prevails. Uh, we are on the amendment. This is Council Member Toombs' amendment. We're voting on that. All those in favor of the amendment indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Amendment passes. Councilmember Mendes, you are now recognized on your bill as amended. It's 318 as amended. Move uh, the resolution as amended with a sorry. very brief explanation. It's a resolution. I'm sorry. R is 2023-18 as amended. Councilmember Mendes says move passage. Properly seconded. Back to Councilmember Mendes for an explanation. Um, we, we dove right into the, um, the amendment without talking about what the resolution does. But just very briefly, this relates to Federal CARES Act relief funds. Um, about $121 million was received by uh, Metro. It's in a segregated account right now. None of it has been appropriated or spent. All this resolution does um, is acknowledge the receipt of the money. 
um, and pursuant to that amendment we just passed, none of it could be spent from the segregated account without uh, further action by the council. Thank you. All right, so that's the resolution uh, as amended. It's been properly seconded. I've still got people with their hands up. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. I had my hand up from prior to the previous question. I can take my hand down. Okay, thank you. Council Member um, Swope, you're recognized. Call the question. Previous question has been called. Uh, we're voting on the previous question, not the resolution as amended. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Previous question prevails 39 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, we are now voting on resolution RS 2020 318 as amended. All those in favor of the resolution as amended, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Vote is 39 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions. Any corrections to that? Resolution RS 2020 318 as amended passes. All right, we are now on uh, resolution RS 2020 327. Uh, sponsors are Sawara, Welch, and others. A resolution encouraging private employers to provide paid sick leave to their employees and urging Governor Bill Lee and the Tennessee General Assembly to repeal statutes that prevent the metropolitan government from requiring private employers to provide paid sick leave to their employees. Council Member Sawar, you're recognized. We may have to come back to her. Council Member Sawara. Um, so you're still having trouble with the phone? Are you on the phone calling in? Um, your uh, button is, uh, you're muted right now. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Council Member Sawara? Uh, we're still having trouble hearing you. Uh, just barely. Uh, you're on your resolution, RS 2020 327. Uh, a committee report? Mr. Vice she called for a committee report. Okay, I think I heard that. Council Member Rosenberg, uh, rules and confirmation. Thank you, Mr. President. Rule of vote is six in favor, none against. Okay, in favor, right? Okay, Council Member Suara, you're on your resolution. I would still have a with a brief explanation. All right, she moves for approval with a brief explanation. I've got a second. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Council Member, Council Member Sawara. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. All right. So the, the resolution is actually asking for employers to be able to give uh, a sick leave to their employees. Uh, because of the high work and everything going on, we know there's a lot of that still goes to work when they say. I'm going to be very brief. I wanted to say a lot before. But what I wanted to stress to everyone is that this does not put anybody on small businesses. If our federal government just approved the uh, family for coronavirus tax that actually refunds employers that give sick leave to the employees. And so there's nobody who's supposed to do this. And it's not because it keeps our community straight, it allows us to uh, see to take time off of work. And this uh, resolution was also worked on a better balance uh, for helping with it. And I want to encourage everyone to please support it. Thank All right. You. 
So Council Member Sawara has moved to approve Resolution RS-2020-327. It's been properly seconded. Council Member Swope, uh, was that your hand up from before? Council Member Swope? <laughs> Council Member Swope? All right, I've got Council Member Lee, you're recognized. Yes, I just wanted to encourage my fellow council members to vote for this. It's good legislation. These are these are times that we have never seen before. We may never see it be again, let's hope. But this legislation is good. It's giving something back to the workers. It's trying to help. And let me add, it's encouraging legislation. So I would very, very much hope that you would look at this and vote for it. All right. Uh, Council Member Swope, you still, you're there? All right, I've got nobody else in the queue. We are ready to vote. We're on RS 2020 327. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. I've got one. Uh, I've got one no. Who, uh, who was that? Hancock. Hancock voted no. no. Young as a no. Uh, yeah, I've got Young as a no, and, Han and Hancock as a no, and Glover. Yes, Vice Mayor. Uh, okay, so I've got Young, Hancock, and Glover voting no. And Johnston. And Johnston. Okay. All Vice right. Mayor Council, this is, I would like to abstain, please. Okay. Any abstentions? I've got Council Member Henderson as an abstention. Anybody else? Nash is an abstention. Okay. Mendes abstains and Nash abstains. Uh, Druffle, is, Druffle abstains. Druffle abstains. Druffle is a no. Uh, who else voted Mendes no? Abstains. Uh, hold on. Hold on. So, uh, Mr. Nash, you voted no or an abstention? Abstention. Abstention. Did someone else vote no? Pulley Swap votes. votes. Pulley votes no. Swap votes no. Swope votes Hager, no. no. Hager no. Hager no. Van Rees abstains. Rutherford abstains, Vice Mayor. Glover abstains instead of votes no. Oh, uh, Roten no, abstains. No, Roten abstains, Vice Mayor. All right, I got it. All right. So what I've got is. Um, So uh, what I've got is a vote of 26-4, 7 against, and 6 abstentions. I'm going to go through that again. 26-4, 7 against, uh, and, and please mute your, because uh, I can hear myself talking. Okay, so mute your, uh, please mute your uh, phones. 7 against, Hager is a no, Swope is a no, Pulley is a no. Young is a no, Hancock is a no, Glover is a no, and Johnston's a no. Abstentions, Van Rees is an abstention, Druffle, Nash, Henderson, Mendez, and Roten are abstentions. Any corrections to Murphy that? Murphy is an abstention too. Who else is an abstention? Murphy. Murphy is an abstention, so I've got the vote as 25 to 7 to 7. Anybody needs to change? 25 to 7 to 7. Uh, resolution passes. All right, so we move on. Resolution RS 2020 328 uh, by Council Members Toombs, Taylor, and others. It's a resolution declaring the Metropolitan Council's intention not to approve any economic development incentive awards for a period of one year and not until metrics are established regarding the awarding of such incentives. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Uh, rules and confirmations. Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Rules voted seven in favor, none against. All right, Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Move for approval with a brief explanation. All right, so I got a motion to approve properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Toombs, for an explanation. Thank you. So with the current budget constraints that the city is experiencing, uh, there's a lot of uh, conversation around the incentives that the city has given out uh, to corporations in the past. And we as a body haven't been able to provide any uh, clear uh, indication of what the benefit has been of, of those uh, incentives. We don't have any metrics in place to determine when a deal is a good deal for the city. And so this uh, resolution is just saying that we're gonna put a one year pause on economic incentives uh, so that we can put some metrics in place so that we can really make uh, informed decisions as to what deals are good deals for the city. This, is, this does not do away with incentives. And it also makes an exception for incentives related to affordable housing. Um, I didn't think that we would wanna put a pause on the building of affordable housing for a year, but this is just a one year pause Let's look at uh, how we do incentives for the city, put some metrics in place uh, so that we can move forward from there. And with right. that, I move for my proposal to approve. All right, so Council Member Toombs has moved for approval. It's been properly seconded. We've got people in the queue. Council Member Nash, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I certainly understand people's angst over the incentive programs. I've been getting the same phone calls. But I think a good number of the former council members here can tell you that there was a lot of metrics measured uh, before they gave away uh, any incentives. And Lord, Nashville has been on fire as a result of some of those incentives. Uh, and frankly, we, we all know we would have squeaked through this year if it hadn't been for the COVID coming up. I, I, I speak against this resolution in that uh, I don't think the mayor's gonna uh, initiate any incentive programs. I'm not sure that there's any companies that are going to want to be uh, making any investments right away, probably for the next year until we get all a better lay of the land. But I always hate never to say never. Uh, the uh, uh, We might have some company come in here tomorrow and say we can make personal protection equipment and, and hire a bunch of folks uh, to do that, and they might need a little help. Uh, and and uh, with this uh, resolution, uh, we'd have to say no. And I, I again, I, I think we just, and, and every single one of these incentives comes before the council to weigh the pros and the cons and the costs and the benefits. Um, again, I don't know there's gonna be one here, but I just don't wanna close off the, the possibility that something could come along. All right, thank you, Councilmember Nash. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I appreciate the, the intent of the resolution as well as Mr. Nash's concerns, but I agree with the sponsor that um, most people that, that talk to me about the budget have the biggest concern is about um, corporate incentives. And I think the more information we can provide, the more people uh, can be aware of when they are beneficial. Um, I will say um, anytime we have had one of these to vote on, we have been given uh, a study done by an independent economist who shows us how many jobs will be created, um, how many um, the sales tax that will be generated, and in those cases, the numbers predict that it will be a net gain for the city, and that's why they've been supported. What um, I think is important, and I hope that this, this resolution will help us get to that, is then having reports after the fact to demonstrate that those actual benefits have happened. Um, and so I'm supporting this because I think it's important um, to show our constituents that we do hear their concerns and also because I hope it will um, help us to um, take the metrics that are in place and take them from just being a predictive um, uh, analysis ahead of time to being an actual report after the fact that, that we can show to constituents and say this actually has been beneficial and here are the economics to show that it really did generate the, um, the taxes and the, um, the revenues that we're talking about. So I do support this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Councilmember Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, as one of the uh, previous council members, I did look at every deal and I looked at it extensively. Some I voted for, some I didn't. 
uh, when we look at the total number of dollars that has been out, actual dollars outlaid versus what a newspaper may put out there, um, you know, it, it's actually been beneficial to us as far as those deals that came to town uh, that did deliver the way they were supposed to. There was a few didn't deliver, and we didn't end up uh, giving the incentive because uh, we, we had out clauses with it. So uh, I won't be supporting this because um, I'm going to agree with Councilman Nash on this. I, I don't want to say never say never right now. We're basically everything we're doing based on the last two and a half months of history, and I just don't think that's the way to look at it when there's other solutions uh, that, that will be available. So thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Glover. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to offer some context to Councilmember Allen's point. I mean, we can use this discussion to uh, try our best to inform. Last term, we offered two jobs grants incentives and did a few participation agreements, but the previous two administrations and the previous council were not aggressively incentivizing corporate activity. I'm, I'm still struck by, uh, with the lack of TIF that we did, the general slowdown in incentives that uh, we are still getting community input from multiple administrations and councils in the past at this point. Now that does speak to why it is important to, to be clearly communicative about that and I understand there is an argument that we should never offer incentives, but I actually think strategic investment in our economy is important and I support Councilmember Mendez and others uh, calling for a more transparent approach. But here's where we are. The Federal Reserve just l announced last week that the COVID-19 response in the United States has destroyed 100,000 businesses by their estimate, right? And some of those are in Nashville. Uh, we passed the Do Better bill last term and we continue to improve our overall approach to incentives. I think taking a tool off the table uh, for economic activity in the city right now is not sending the right message. And I suspect that many national be extremely eager to have more job opportunities in the coming year as long as we are transparent in the approach we pursue as a council. I just can't, knowing how many of our uh, members of our community have already become either underemployed or unemployed. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Councilmember Van Rees. Well, first of all, I'm, um, I'm, I'm never surprised at the articulate way in which uh, we are able to discuss these things, and I I look forward to the opportunity to be able to see everybody's uh, face into this in 3D because uh, just even in the last five minutes, there's been a lot of discussion that may have helped um, this uh, resolution not even be necessary. Um, the idea that um, there's been no accountability is, is just uh, n not accurate. Um, and, and even if you wanted to look back, I know that Mr. Wilshire is now at MBHA, but he's got information. Um, uh, Audra Ladd has information in regard to uh, the accountability on uh, any incentives that may have taken place in regard to this. Um, Nashville is going to continue to be the place that people want to come. Uh, there are major cities uh, that are learning that um, – Big cities might not be where they want all of their business to be in. They may need to diversify and move into middle America. And um, we're going to see more and more companies want to come to a place like Nashville. And there will be more and more uh, competition to get those jobs. And quite frankly, if there's one word that we all have in common in regard to any incentives is that we want those local jobs. And so um, there are two stop um, valves that already exist, which I believe makes this resolution unnecessary. One of those is a man named John Cooper. Uh, Mayor Cooper has already indicated that he's going to be very strategic and surgical in regard to any, any sort of incentives that may or may not come towards Nashville. The second is us as a body. None of those incentives get through unless we vote on them. Um, and so uh, I think that we can take them one by one uh, in the format that we already have in place. Uh, I understand uh, the um, concerns, but I do think that those concerns are questions that can be answered without further legislation. Uh, and for that reason and for my optimistic 
um, in nature in regard to knowing that uh, Nashville is going to be the place that people want to come, uh, I will vote no on this. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Withers. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. <clears throat> Vice Mayor. I really appreciate Council Member O'Connell referencing the Do Bill, uh, the Do Better Bill that um, our former District 7 colleague, uh, Council Member Anthony Davis, worked on so uh, at such great length with labor that specifically put in about as many provisions as we can uh, under state law to make sure that jobs that are coming in um, have good workplace protections, hopefully have good apprenticeship programs if that's applicable. Lots and lots of great things that labor asked for already are part of the Do Better Bill, which is Metro law to the extent that we can under state law. Um, so we already do have that metric by which to measure uh, ECD proposals should they come. I would also point out that um, we really don't have a, a whole lot of uh, ECD staffing in the mayor's office to pursue those even if they wanted to. We did, do have Audra Ladd and who does a great job with small businesses in particular. Um, but we don't really have that staffing in the mayor's office. We uh, and the mayor's proposed budget are also looking at slashing in half our already very low uh, on a comparison basis. Uh, support for the National Chamber and our uh, minority chambers, um, which do a lot to um, to um, expand businesses. We're already cutting that support even by half, even of what was already a small amount. Um, I, I'm definitely one who came to council being very skeptical of business and business deals. Uh, having sat through some of those uh, deliberations, uh, I ended up voting on uh, at least some of them. Um, some contexts were different a couple of years ago than they are today. Certainly there are some incentives that we uh, might have agreed to as recently as four years ago that we wouldn't today. Um, but um, I, I appreciate the uh, inclusion, the exclusion of incentives that pertain to affordable housing in particular. I think that's a very good thing about this resolution. Um, but we are not, frankly, are not seeing a lot of incentive deals, period. Um, but also in terms of helping our residents, um, we, uh, our residents are going to be helped best by getting back to work. And so if there is an opportunity that comes to bring uh, good jobs to people in our communities, I believe that it's beneficial to our neighbors. Some of our neighbors may need retraining. We're looking at in our city not only at struggling to fund MNCS, we're struggling to fund Opportunity Now, which gives our young people jobs. We're struggling to fund community education. We ourselves, because of our budget, are pulling out so many of the support to get our community members especially our vulnerable community members, to work. I mean, even transit. I mean, just all these things that help people actually get jobs, get their own income, support their families and their household and their children. We are already having to remove that. None of these, you know, none of these deals that we're going to pass through are these sweetheart deals. So I appreciate the sentiment of this, but I can't be in support of this because we might have any number of opportunities where businesses are going to come in and provide really good supports to our school system, to our community colleges, to our retraining programs. There could be really good offers. And if we are saying that categorically we don't want to talk about that, then it's going to be harder to have that conversation. Right. So I can't support this for those reasons today. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilmember Weathers. Uh, Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Call the question. Uh, Councilmember Mendez has called the previous question. We're voting on the previous question. Again, we're not voting on the resolution. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous, all those in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. I've got two no's. Who are the no's? Porterfield. Porterfield. Who's the other no? Councilmember Taylor. So I've got two no's. Any abstentions? Previous question prevails. 37 for, two against, uh, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? All right. Uh, we are on uh, the resolution. We are on resolution RS 2020 328 uh, by Councilmember Toombs, Taylor, and others. Uh, we are voting on the resolution. Um, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 
Opposed, no. 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 Yeah. Any abstentions? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, Madam Clerk, we are, and we're not going to open up the machines. We're going to take a roll call vote, as we, um, as we should. We're just going to ask you to go through the roll and record either a yes, no, or an abstention. All right? So, Madam Clerk, um, have you got the roll in front of you? Yes. All right, so um, members of the council, we're just doing this straight up. Yes, no, or abstention. Madam Clerk, you're recognized to call the roll. Member Mendez. Abstain. Council Member Hurt. No. Council Member Allen. Yes. Council Member Glover. No. Council Member Swara. Yes. Council Member Hall is still absent. Council Member Toombs. Yes. Council Member Gamble. Yes. Council Member Swope. No. Council Member Parker. Yes. Council Member Withers. No. Council Member Benedict. Council Member Benedict votes yes. Council Member Van Rees. No. Council Member Hancock. No. Council Member Young. Yes. Council Member Young votes yes. Council Member Hager. Council Member Hager, uh, unmute. No. Council Member Evans. No. Council Member Bradford. Yes. Council Member Roden. No. Council Member Syracuse. Council Member Syracuse abstains. Council Member Welsh. Yes. Council Member Sledge. Abstain. Council Member Cash. No. Council Member O'Connell. I'm sorry, I cast mine in the machine. Hang on, I'm getting it back here. Oh, here it is, it's a no. Council Member Roberts. No. Council Member Taylor. Yes. Council Member Hauser. No. Council Member Druffel. No. Council Member Murphy. No. Council Member Pulley. No. Council Member Johnston. No. Council Member Nash. No. Council Member Bercher. I'm abstaining. Council Member Porterfield. Yes. Council Member Sepulveda. Yes. Council Member Rutherford. Yes. Council Member Stiles. Yes. Council Member Lee. Council Member Lee. Okay who didn't vote yet. Council Member Henderson. No. Council Member Rosenberg. No. Council Member Suara, are you able to uh, use your audio? I voted yes. Thank you. I believe the only other missing vote was from Council Member Lee. Um, if that's not correct, Sean, will you please uh, indicate back to the Vice Mayor? Council Member Lee. Lee. Council Member Lee. Council Member Lee. All right, so she will be voted, uh, she will be uh, listed as not voting. Um, yes. So um, what's your totals? We have 14 in favor, 20 against. And I would need to count the abstentions. So I think, um, I think Councilor Sawara voted twice. Yes. Yeah. Because, I th yeah. So 
So I've got uh, 14 yeses, 20 noes, uh, four abstentions, and one council member not voting. Miss Lee, and who's the other one? Hall, absent. Oh, and, and okay. council member Hall. I'm just not counting him in the vote. So I've got 14 yes, uh, 20 no, four abstentions, and that would be actually two people, two council members not voting. 14 to 20 to 4 to 2. Any corrections to that? Resolution fails. Okay. Uh, resolution RS 2020 329 by uh, Council Members Van Rees, Toombs, and others. Resolution requesting the United States Congress to provide direct rental housing assistance for individuals impacted by the COVID 19 pandemic. Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Uh, yes, I would like to move approval with a brief comment. Okay. So you've got to get committee reports, uh, rules confirmation. Oh, rules yes, confirmation. Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Rules voted seven in favor, none against, with one abstention. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Van Riesch, you recognized. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, uh, this uh, is a, an opportunity for us to help out uh, Representative. Jim Cooper, uh, who has already voted in favor of uh, this action, and uh, we need to make sure that our senators um, also hear from us as well. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, also, a point of information, if I may, while I have them unmuted, uh, is there a reason we're, we did not use I legislate on that last vote? Um, it, it seems it seems as though we're not using what we paid for, and I, I just so wanted to get an answer on that in addition. Thank you. Okay, so Councilmember Van Rees said obviously doesn't have anything to do with your resolution, but I will tell you that there's no reason to do I legislate and vote and then call the roll and check how we voted on I legislate. So it just made sense just to go through it one at it one time instead of doing it all together. That's why I did it that way. Um, but uh, Councilmember uh, Van Rees, um, you have moved your resolution for approval. Uh, there's a proper second on that. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. aye. Any, aye. any opposition? Say no. Any abstentions? Rosenberg. Rosenberg abstains. All right. Anybody Wolf else? Abstains. Anybody else? Swope abstains. Uh, and Swope abstains. So I've got Swope as a. Oh, as sorry, a, Vice Mayor. Couldn't get my. I'm, I'm a no. Glover's a no. Glover's a no. Swope is an abstention. Henderson. Anybody else? Henderson abstains, please. Okay. Johnson would like to abstain as well. All right, so what I've got is I've got 34 yeses, one no, and four abstentions. Rosenberg, Swope, Henderson, and Johnston are abstentions. Glover is a no. Any corrections to that? Resolution passes 34-4, one against, four abstentions. All right. Uh, we're now on resolution RS 2020 330. Uh, Council Member Bradford is the sponsor. Resolution honoring the life of BNA K9 Roman and her service to our city. Council Member Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Can I get committee report? Uh, rules and confirmations. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Rules voted seven in favor, none against, with one abstention. Okay, seven zero to one. Uh, Council Member Bradford, you're recognized. Move for approval with a brief explanation. All right, it got a proper second. You're recognized for a brief explanation on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just uh, some information about this. Um, Roman was a yellow Labrador who served with uh, the National International Airport Department of Public Safety from 2014 to 2020. Um, she served with, alongside her officer, Stephen Beard, as part of the DNA Canine Explosive Detection Team. 
Um, she was trained at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, and over the course of her career, um, successfully scored 100% of all of her um, TSA evaluations. Um, she passed away Monday, April 13th, so we recognize that as her, as her end of watch. She's remembered as an effective, loyal, and highly valued team member who is deeply missed by all at DNA. So I just appreciate everybody for their support and recognizing the service that K-9 and Officer Roman provided to not only DNA, but to our city. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman Bradford. Um, anybody else in the queue? Seeing none, uh, we're voting on resolution RS-2020-330 um, by Councilmember Bradford. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Say no. Any abstentions? Rosenberg. Rosenberg abstains. Anybody else? The vote is 38-4, uh, zero against, uh, one abstention. 38 to zero to one. Any corrections to that? That's the vote. All right, so that finally completes our resolutions. We are now on bills on first reading. Uh, if there's no objection, we're gonna have to take 11. Um, All right, so Council Member Allen, we're checking on BL 2019-11. Do you want to uh, defer that or take that off of first reading? Council Member Allen. I would like to, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to take it off with a brief explanation when the time comes. Okay, so we're just bumping that off of bills on uh, the first reading. Um, if there's no other objection, we'll consider all other ordinances on first reading in one vote at the time. Can I have a motion? Got a motion and a second. Motion to adopt the uh, all bills except for the first one, 2019-11, properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. No. opposed no. Aye. Opposed no. Aye. Any objections, uh, any abstentions, excuse me. Uh, vote is 39-4, zero against, uh, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? All right, then we have just approved all ordinances on first reading. I'm going to go back to 2019-11. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to defer indefinitely with a brief explanation, please. All right, so the motion is to defer indefinitely 2019-11 properly. Seconded back to you, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This, uh, people may remember, is a lease agreement um, between Belmont University and Metro Schools. Uh, regarding a batting facility on the Rose Park School property. Um, and I wanted to reintroduce, to um, amend it so that I could get on public record all the progress that has been made so far through a number of community meetings and work group sessions um, that have dealt with concerns that came up when this was introduced last October. Um, we are not through, um, but we have made a lot of progress and there are uh, a number of um, concerns that have been dealt with. Uh, some of them, I'll just run through it very briefly. There was a 50-year um, term that's now been reduced to a 30-year with the options for renewals. Um, an escalation has been added to the payments. Um, the conditions for reducing the payments have been removed. There were some references to specific after-school groups that have been removed. And we've added some uh, more specific reporting requirements and created an oversight committee. So we have tried uh, to, to hear the concerns of the neighbors and to, um, to amend this and also in the process to create a better process for public-private partnerships in general. Um, the neighbors asked for additional time to collaborate on the language in the amendment, and I have agreed to that so that we can meet uh, to revise that further. And my hope is that we will go over that amendment language and reach some consensus and then um, I will bring this back and we will continue the work and the community engagement. So with that, I renew my uh, motion for an indefinite deferral. So Council Member Thank Allen you. has moved to defer indefinitely as properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor of the indefinite deferral say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed say no. Any abstentions? Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? 
the uh, bill uh, 2019 11 is deferred indefinitely. Uh, we have one late file bill by Council Member Mendes. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to suspend the rules to have the capital improvements budget um, bill considered on first reading. Okay, this is the capital improvements budget. Uh, Councilman Mendes has moved uh, to suspend the rules to get that uh, before this body on first reading. Uh, any objection to that? Seeing none, uh, Councilman Mendes, you're recognized on the bill. I'll, I'll move for approval on first reading with a very brief explanation. Okay, I got a, a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Mendes. All right, um, so every year um, uh, the CIB um, ends up uh, being a late item in the second meeting in May for first reading. Uh, under the charter, it's required to be given to us by May 15, and it has to be approved by June 15, and in order to meet that timeline, it ends up being uh, late filed for this meeting in May every year. So the fact that it's late is uh, routine and sort of driven by the deadlines in the charter. Okay, um, any questions? Councilman Mendes has moved for uh, adoption on first reading of the capital improvements budget. Um, Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Yeah, so, uh, and this may go to the sponsor on, uh, this will have it on our agenda for, I wanna say it's June 9th then. Council Member Mendes. We will have a public hearing on this uh, second reading on June 2nd, and we'll take it up on- On the second, First, the actual vote would go uh, before the council on the night, I guess so. If I didn't ask the question properly, I apologize. Yeah, that's all right. Um, and, and just for uh, public and, and new folks, so it's it's a bill, so it's three readings. Tonight will be first reading. Um, second reading and public hearing will be June 2nd. We'll get the public's input on it. Um, and then third and final reading is scheduled for June 9th. Okay. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure of, I, uh, because Obviously, June 16th would have been too late, so I, I just wanted a confirmation that this would be third reading on the 9th. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilmember Glover. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we're voting on um, uh, the late file bill, the capital improvements budget. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Aye. Opposed say no. Any abstentions? So this is a uh, capital improvements budget uh, on uh, first reading. Uh, the vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any questions to that? And uh, that bill is passed on first reading. We're now on bills on second reading. The first bill is BL 2021-27 uh, by Council Member Hall, ordinance to amend title 17 of the Metropolitan Code. Uh, by changing from SP and R40 to MUNA zoning for property located at 6404 Eaton's Creek Road. 3580, 3612, 3616, and 3622 Old Clarksville Pike. Eaton's Creek Road unnumbered and Old Clarksville Pike unnumbered. 215 feet west of Jolton Community Center Road. It's 53.22 acres. Um, Council Member Hall um, is, I don't believe, is um, here. Uh, it's anybody else sign on to the bill, as far as we know? Okay. So the uh, bill is automatically deferred one meeting. BL 2020-147 as amended by Council Member Murphy. This is an ordinance to amend Chapter 2.196 of the Metropolitan Code regarding lobbyist registration and disclosure. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move a substitute. All right, so let's get committee reports first. Rules and confirmations, Council Member Rosenberg. Already been approved. Oh, already approved. Already. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, Council Member Murphy has moved uh, the substitute, properly seconded. Council Member Murphy, uh, explanation on the substitute. Thank you. Um, this past weekend um, or last week when going over the bill as we passed it um, or as we passed it through committee, I found that we had a misnumbering in the sections. And then also when reading through it, I found a few other ways that would be better organized um, for the legislation. And so that's really what the substitute covers. Um, I know that many of you have received emails, as have I, from constituents, primarily architects and engineers. Um, I have spent a lot of time over this uh, since last week speaking with their organizations 
In fact, I had to reach out to them um, to try to communicate and learn what their issues were. A lot of the problems that they are um, having with the legislation is actually what our current code already has defined as lobby, lobbyist, influencing. And so um, it was sent to you all today, but I, incur I do not expect that anybody got to it today with all the other emails we had. But I've done a side-by-side -side basically a comparison of taking the current code and then putting in the legislation or the language of, of my substitute. And so um, with that, I asked for your approval on the substitute. It, um, and then I am going to move to defer this one more meeting so that we can get the corrected information out there for uh, those who do not have the right information about the bill. And then also to give you all time to feel comfortable with that, um, with the reorganization and where you all can see in the code that I'm not, this, this legislation does not change the definition of lobbyist, lobby, influencing, who has to register now, who has to register after this legislation. Um, and so with that, I'd like to put the substitute on and then I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. All right, so Councilmember Murphy has moved, the, has moved the substitute. Um, and it's uh, it's been seconded. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. But I just want to thank the sponsor for deferring this. She is correct. We've received quite a few uh, emails regarding it, and I've heard from people that I've not heard from in the entire time that I've been on the council, and it does give me some unrest. So I appreciate her being willing to go back, hear what the concerns are, and making sure that there's clearly an understanding uh, from those who have expressed some concerns. So I support um, the deferral. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurt. Council Member Nash, you're recognized. There he is. Councilmember Nash, uh, your microphone is, you're muted. Councilmember okay. Nash, there you go. I'm, I'm unmuted now. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, I, I, this is a, a big uh, thing you've taken out, and I applaud you for it. Um, in the section uh, about uh, lobby does not mean any of the following communications, there's kind of a, uh, Section B has a, um, kind of a, 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 a skin clause for licensed attorneys acting uh, in the representative capacity on behalf of a client appearing before an official in the executive branch, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and I wonder if there might be kind of a similar carve out that you could do for these architects and engineers who are just acting in the role of subject matter experts and, and not really lobbying, so to speak. Uh, or if that's necessary, or can you explain that why? Because that's kind of a big question. Councilmember Murphy? Sure, I'd be happy to, because this is actually what I discussed with um, AIA, which is the American Institute of Architects, um, for well over an hour. And I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't share our conversation with their members further. So that carve out for attorneys already exists in our current code, and it is, uh, I believe, verbatim what exists at, in the state lobbyist code. Um, the important difference here is the reason that carve out exists, in my opinion, is because you have a constitutional right to an attorney in many situations. Um, there is not a constitutional right to an architect or an engineer to represent you in the same way that you do an attorney in those enumerated instances in that section. And so um, that is already in our code. It's already in the state code. So to carve out architects there, I think, would be inappropriate. And it also would then create um, bigger problems, such as a loophole for an architect that is lobbying. Um, they would say, I don't have to because I am an architect. Um, under our current code, it's the kind of litmus test is, is are you communicating with an elected official um, or trying to influence an, um, an action and being paid for it? In the definition of influencing, if you are simply providing information, 
if you're providing statistics, technical information, and the source, very much like we know architects and engineers communicate that with us all the time, but we ask them for that technical information or something like that. In the definition currently, that's not considered influencing, therefore it's not lobbying. And that's why a lot of architects do not have to register now. But when they cross over from just providing information to then influencing, communicating to influence with uh, the government, that's where it crosses over into lobbying and why it's important that we can't create that carve out. Um, again, these are already definitions that are in the current code. These are not definitions I made up. So a lot of their issue is, I think, coming from the fact that many of them are realizing that maybe they've had clients or come before us and should have registered and didn't, and they don't want to be called lobbyists. Um, I get it. I'm a professional lobbyist, and sometimes that's considered a dirty word. Um, but but what this legislation does, it really, it really just reorganizes the code. It creates mechanisms to enforce the code that are not there now. Um, it modernizes it since it hasn't been updated since 91. It takes a lot of information um, and language from the state, um, the state code on lobbying. And really, at the end of the day, it's still a lower threshold of expectation of transparency than is required at the state. And so with that, um, I am working on the boards and commission piece because I don't think that we metroized that part of this legislation enough um, and so we are we are still looking at that and that's why I am asking to defer it so we because it can't be amended on third reading um, but again at the end of the day that carve out comparing an arch what what services an architect does to an attorney I think is night and day all right thank you councilmember Murphy um, all right so we go to the next uh, councilmember van Reese you're recognized Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, Councilmember Murphy, I uh, appreciate you giving us uh, the deferral so that we can formulate our questions. It's a very dense um, legislation and with everything happening with the budget, um, I don't want to miss on some of this and uh, I know that you want to get it right. Um, I know that. I know you want to get it right. Uh, one of the questions, and I'm still forming my questions, which is part of the reason that I need more time, but one of them is uh, just even coming up with that $100 a fee as opposed to $50 fee, uh, where you came up with that number and what, if that means it's a fiscal note that, you, that the clerk's office has determined that's what it would cost to um, to to manage all of this, or, or I just want to make sure that all that input is done and and I want to make sure that you have the time to do that. And I'm, I'm wondering if you would please consider uh, deferring it until the first meeting in July so that we can get through the budget, have plenty of time to get this absolutely correct, and then um, make this thing happen in, in July. Um, and uh, I, I just ask you for that. I understand if you feel like you can get it done sooner, but uh, I'd love more time. Councilmember Murphy. Sure. So I started working on this um, in our first term and last term, and it was actually um, suggested by Mike Jamison at the time to bump it up to 100. So in 91, it was set at $25. And then I got a, I would look back at my notes, but um, I think maybe 10 years ago, it was bumped up to $50. And then, um, and then basically, because this is going to cause some more reports to be filed and things like that, um, the, just the expectation that it is a little bit more paperwork for the clerk's office to go ahead and bump that up to $100. And so that's something that we put in there during our first draft back in like 2015, 2016, um, just because of the expectation that the annual um, lobbying disclosure report is requiring a little bit more work than currently, um, you know, disclosing, uh, making sure the client signs off on it. Currently right now, if a lobbyist does not know um, if a client has paid for something or, or something like that, it doesn't have to be disclosed on the uh, annual report. 
And so now I've added in there that the client also has to sign off that the report is accurate. Um, that way, you know, the left hand and the right hand need to be talking when we're talking about transparency. Um, I think that there has been a lot of conversation about this. I have I passed out drafts of this bill to many lobbyists that work on the state and local level um, last year. Um, I passed it out to groups like Neighbor to Neighbor and the Beacon Center and um, some of our local activists that we hear from a lot on planning and zoning issues. So I did shop it around. Uh, and again, I, the reason I'm just doing a one re meeting deferral this time is because the main um, complaints that I've been getting that we've been hearing are complaints about the code that already exists, not the parts that I'm changing. So with that, I think just a one meeting deferral is appropriate at this time. All right. Um, any other comments, questions? Council Member Van Rees, anything else? No, I appreciate that. I just um, I, I just want to make sure that that, that that fee is not arbitrary, and if it's if it's five years old, that we we get that fee correct. So um, if that could be kind of on that checklist, that'd be great. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Withers. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. And, uh, Councilman Murphy, I appreciate your, your work on this today, and I know you, you are so experienced in this and have worked on it a long time. Um, you know, I have just heard from so many of my constituents who are architects, designers, landscape architects, any of those things, who are concerned about it, um, some more stringently than others. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think for all of us council members, um, uh, the first question that someone asks us is, you know, would you support this for a zone change uh, in particular? Uh, and sometimes even for, for, for those of us that have historic districts to say, like, would you feel comfortable with this design element if it went for historic or things like that? So, I mean, I think that kind of the, the outset of that conversation usually is, would you support it? Um, if you look at how many zoning bills I have introduced, uh, there are very few changes that I would support, but that's that's me, not ever council members that way. Um, but but I think that, that having an understanding of is an architect, an engineer, uh, or someone like that who's representing a property owner asking you, would you support it, or asking you after you've had several community meetings, would you support it now that we've had community meetings and it appears that we've addressed the questions of most people like, is that lobbying? I mean, I, I think that I have a lot of uh, constituents who have really raised that question and have made me rethink it myself. Um, it sounds like you got some answers to it, although that your, your response to that, which I'm sure is a good one, that if that is what's in the current code, that raises even more questions for me that I want to look at even more. Um, we definitely heard recently from some folks who are architects, engineers, uh, residential designers, um, folks who have experience with um, plumbing and electrical that serve on metro boards and commissions that they're concerned that they may not be able to serve on boards and commissions. We've heard concerns that folks um, may or may not be able to exercise their constitutional rights as they determine it to contribute to political campaigns. There's just a lot of really good questions. I think they're good. I know that you'll have good answers to them, um, but I just feel like um, we're going to have so much angst and, and attention that we need to focus on the budget for uh, coming up to the public hearing that, that I sort of agree with Council Member Van Rees that um, a couple of more meetings of deferral, I, I think passing the substitute is good uh, today, um, but I think that having deferring at a couple more meetings until we can all sort of take a breath and look at it a little bit more, including with our constituents, would be beneficial and um, just wondering again if you if you would consider that once we have applied the substitute all right thank you councilman withers actually your time just ran out in one second um council member gamble you're recognized thank you chair i i would just like to reiterate all of the comments that have already been stated i appreciate council member murphy's work on this uh bill, or, or bill but i too agree that it seems like there's not, it's not just the housekeeper 
affecting changes uh, that are being made to this charter, but it's, it's changing the way that a lot of people do business and just would really appreciate a little more time to look at this uh, and to talk to other professionals and paraprofessionals about it uh, before moving it forward and just would also ask that the sponsor consider uh, deferral for more than one meeting so that we can get through the budget and have a little more time to to review it and discuss it. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Campbell. Uh, Councilmember Hancock, you're recognized. Call the question, please. Previous question has been called. Uh, so we're voting on the previous question. We're not, we haven't even gotten to vote on the substitute yet. Previous question, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Okay, previous question is, uh, prevails 39-4, zero against, uh, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Uh, Council Member uh, Murphy has moved her substitute. We are on BL 2020-147. Council Member has, M Murphy, this is, we're voting on the substitute. So um, this is just to put the substitute on the bill. Um, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Okay, Swope votes no. Any abstentions? Vote is 38 for, one against, and zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Substitute is uh, put on the bill. We're at now, Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill 2021-47 as substituted. Uh, you're recognized for a motion. Great, thank you. I did want to remind everyone that this was filed in January. Um, uh, the Architects and Engineers Association acknowledged to me that they knew it was filed in January, and even though I deferred it at last meeting at Councilman O'Connell's request, um, they still only came to me after I reached out to them in the last uh, probably 40, 48 hours. Um, so that has led to a little bit of, you know, come on, people, I'm willing to work with you, and I, and I asked them to send me language um, before tonight of, of some suggestions and things, and I've yet to see that. Now, again, we've been on calls and meetings for a few hours now. Mm -hmm. So um, I do want to draw your attention to, again, today, please review uh, the email that was forwarded to you by Hannah. It shows you what is in the current code in black, what my substitute has in blue, and then in red, it has some notes about what was reorganized or where it came from somewhere else. You also received some letters of support for this legislation and transparency from our brothers and sisters in the labor movement, and I really appreciate their support in this and their commitment to more transparency for our constituents. And so with that, I'd like to, renew, uh, I guess not renew, I haven't made it yet, but uh, make a motion for a one meeting deferral. Uh, the motion is to defer one meeting properly. Seconded. Councilmember Glover, you want to be recognized on the uh, deferral motion? Uh, well, it, yeah, it's, it, it, the deferral has been called, so I, I was going to just say if we don't defer it longer than that, then I'll be in no vote on, on, on the uh, next reading. Okay. And in fact, I'll be in no vote right now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Hurt, you want to be recognized on the uh, deferral motion? Yes, I agree um, that there were several council members who wanted a, a longer deferral, and uh, considering that the sponsor is unwilling to do so, uh, I too would be a vote of no uh, on on the one meeting deferral because I I'm not really sure. I did read through uh, the emails and I went back and read hers. The, uh, what came through with Hannah, and I'm not exactly sure uh, the purpose. I'm not sure what we expect the outcome to be, and, and I'm not so convinced that it's necessary or it's going to be such an impact that it's necessary. So I would also be, you no, know, if this is only going to be a one meeting deferral. And I actually had my hand up earlier because I wanted to um, recommend uh, at least a two meeting deferral. So can she do that? She can't, because there's a deferment.
continue just because there's one pending. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just have a procedural question. If if there are a number of council members who would support a longer deferral that are not comfortable with the one meeting deferral, procedurally, if we uh, defeated the one meeting deferral, then could a motion be made for a longer deferral, in which case there might be more support later? So, Council Member Allen, we were, we were just checking. There is, there is a... ...meeting deferral. If that makes you feel more comfortable. I'm at the will of the body. So, uh, Council Member Allen, uh, just check with Mr. Cooper. There is a motion defer on the table. It's a one meeting deferral. Um, if it's pulled back, then another motion could come. Or if that motion is defeated, then a separate motion to defer longer than one meeting can then be, be brought. But at this point, um, as long as there's a motion to defer on the table based upon the fact that it's just one meeting, we can't entertain another motion to defer on top of that. Does that make sense? Vice Mayor, I think uh, Council Member Murphy was wanting to speak. Well, so we Thank we're you, Councilman Reeves. Yes, I was trying to speak. Um, I'm at the will of the body. If y'all would feel more comfortable with a two meeting deferral, I'm happy to modify my and uh, my motion for two meeting deferral. So, uh, Councilman Murphy, are you pulling back your original motion and you're going to defer for two meetings? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Councilman Murphy is now um, rescinding her original motion. Uh, now the motion is to defer two meetings. Again, properly seconded. We're on a motion to defer two meetings. Okay, I've still got people in the queue. Um, Council Member Allen, um, do you wish to be recognized any further? Uh, yes, please. Just another clarification. Because we've got this funny extra meeting in here, when we say two meeting deferral, does that mean June 9th, July 9th, or uh, later? No, the, the third Tuesday. It would be the. Um, it would be our third Tuesday in June. Okay, thank you okay. for that clarification. Uh -huh. And I appreciate the council member being willing to work with us on this. All right, so I've got other people in the queue. Um, council member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just need remarks as abstaining on this uh, legislation since I did work at the state and possibly one day at Metro that would fall under the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council member Bradford, you're recognized. Previous question. Previous question is called. We're on a motion to defer, we're, but we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Vote is 39 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions on the previous question. Any corrections to that? All right, previous question prevails by that vote. We are now on a motion to defer two meetings, which would put it on the third Tuesday of June, not the 9th, but it would be the um, 16th. June the 16th, it would put it on that calendar. Uh, we're voting on that motion to defer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? No. Uh, Glover votes no. Anybody else? Any abstentions? Swart votes no as well. All right. Who was the abstention? Roten. Roten? Yeah, okay. So the vote is 36 4, 2 against, 1 abstention. 36 4, 2 against, 1 abstention on uh, the motion to defer two meetings. Any corrections to that? Uh, then uh, the motion passes 36 to 2 to 1. Uh, this bill will be deferred. The substitute, the bill as substitute will be deferred um, to uh, the third, well, it will actually be the third meeting in June. It will be the third Tuesday in June, which will be June the uh, 16th. Um, all right, so we're now moving on to BL 2020 224 by Council Members Taylor and Suara. Uh, ordinance amending Chapter 11.22 of the Metropolitan Code to require landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to a sale of the property. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. Council Member Murphy. I'm sorry. 
I get lost in my own report. Remind me which bill we are on. We are on 2020-224 by Taylor right. and Tawara. So we voted. Do you want to hear the amendments first, or do they need to be I want you give us <clears throat> give us the amendments and then uh, what happened with the bill. Okay. So the Hauser Amendment was 15 to 0, 15 in favor, 0 against. Then the Taylor Amendment on to the Hauser Amendment was 15 in favor, 0 against. Then the bill as amended with the Hauser, then Taylor, was deferred one meeting, 15 in favor, zero against. Okay. All right. Uh, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on your bill. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to uh, have a personal privilege, or do I need to move? Or what, do you, what do you want to do with your bill? Oh, I need to make a motion uh, to defer the bill the first meeting in July, July 2nd. Okay, so uh, the motion is to defer the, the bill into the first meeting in July, properly seconded. Um, any discussions on um, the bill? I've got one hand up. Council Member Bradford, is that from before? Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Council Member Hurt? Yes, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And again, I want to thank the sponsor for um, deferring this bill as well. Um, I do love and appreciate the intent of the bill. Uh, I have heard from quite a few people, uh, myself, uh, in regards to this and being a land uh, owner and, and a landlord, uh, I just happen to have a, a good tenant. But to me, this legislation, um, it, it punishes good landlords like myself, and it um, rewards bad tenants that I know many landlords deal with. And, and, and I'm not exactly sure what we can do or if it's something that can be in order to get a compromise that will, you know, not punish those who do well and not really give the, the, the tenants an opportunity to take advantage of the generosity that good landlords offer. Uh, I'm not sure if there are leases and things that automatically address these issues, so I am thankful that there's going to be more time given towards um, enacting this particular legislation because I do think that there has to be more um, discussion and thought put into it before we can act actually um, make the very best decision. A lot of times these legislations, it's the unforeseen consequences that come out after it's been passed, and I am very cautious of that. So thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurt. So we have people lined up in the queue. This is simply a motion to defer. So I'm going to go back to Council Member Taylor. Did I cut you off before? Council, uh, excuse me, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you so much. I would like to actually move the amendments. Is that, uh, I spoke out of turn. I do apologize. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me explain what you're going to have to do. So, Council Member Taylor, you can do that, or you can simply put the amendments on later if you want to. But if you want to put them on tonight, then you're going to have to rescind your motion to defer. Then we're actually on your motions to amend. That's perfect. I'd like to rescind the motion to defer. All right. So um, we um, so you're pulling back your motion to defer, so we don't have a motion to defer at this point. Now you've got uh, amendments. So the first amendment, I believe, is by Council Member Hauser. That's correct. All right, Council Member Hauser, you're recognized on an amendment. Okay, you're recognizing me. What is it you want me to do? So, Council Member Hauser, um, you have an amendment on 2020-224, Council Member okay. Taylor's so bill. Can you explain it? Is that it? Uh, you need to move the amendment. Uh, and then I'll come back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Okay, I move the amendment. All right, so I got a motion on the amendment, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of your amendment. 
The explanation of my amendment is the fact that I wanted to make sure that we uh, attached what was controllable uh, to the timeline. And it's not controllable when a property would actually close. You might list a property, it might sell quickly and, and close within a month. It might take it several months. So to put a 90 day on when something would close would actually delay action. So my amendment was to put the 90 days on when you list the property because you are making that decision totally yourself. So you know when you're listing a property. So if you put 90 days from when you list the property, then that's something that is controllable. I just didn't want to attach anything to this that was beyond the uh, landlord's control. And so what I was saying is that you need to allow the tenant to know your intention is to sell a property enough in advance that they aren't taken off guard. And if, if they are notified 90 days in advance uh, that you're going to be listing a property, they have plenty of time to think of if this sells, what what might be the results and what could my actions be? Whereas if you set it based upon when something closed, it could actually delay a closing and that could cause an issue for the property owner. And I didn't want to put something on a property owner that would mean they might lose the sale. Because the whole intent of this legislation as I looked at it was making sure that the renter had an opportunity to make adjustments if that was so needed. So council member has, uh, council member Hauser has moved her amendment. It's been properly seconded. Um, I've got um, Hancock and Nash in the queue. Is that from before? Hancock or Nash, do you wish to speak on the amendment? Yes, I do, please. Council, member, me. council member Hancock, you're recognized. Um, so uh, this could be a clarification question, but also echoing councilor Hurt's comments earlier. I'm concerned that this amendment and actually the bill in general is taking into account just the renter and not the landlord and also assuming that renters are all good and landlords are all bad and also perhaps assuming that the landlords are you know in this for a big business and there's lots of different situations um and i don't think that this 90 days goes both ways do the tenants have to notify the landlord 90 days in advance when they're looking for new housing do they have to give 90 days advance notice before they leave um, you know, I've only been a tenant once and it was for four years, or, or I've only been a landlord once and it was for four years, but it started as two years. And at the end of the two years, we were waiting on some military orders. And if we had had to give our tenant 90 days notice, we would have told them to move out. And 90 days later, when our orders came in at the last minute, we would have, you know, then been looking for another tenant. And this person really loved being here. She was happy to stay. So it gave her an opportunity to stay for another two years. And similarly, when we um, you know, came back into the country, we didn't know exactly 90 days out when we would be coming in. So 90 days just seems like a long time, especially when you're not juggling a lot of properties or it's a big apartment complex or whatnot. And I think there are a lot of great landlords out there. And to put this you know, requirement on the landlord to serve the tenant but not do it vice versa is unfair. Thank you, Councilmember Hancock. Councilmember Nash. Yes, I, I, I share some of the same problems with the amendment and the bill itself. Uh, there's a phrase in here that landlords must provide a minimum 90 day written notice to tenants prior to listing the lease premises for sale. Uh, I get, I, I have a small duplex that I rent, I really inherited from my son, but I get offers every other day from somebody wanting to uh, buy this house, uh, we'll buy cash and we'll close in one month. Uh, so it wasn't even listed. So what do we do with those homes that sell without being listed? I think we're complicating uh, an issue that doesn't need to be complicated. Nothing it is. We have leases. Uh, I, we've already given 90 days before, uh, if we, before we raise the rent. I, I think this is just one more bridge too far. All right. Remember, we're on the amendment. Uh, we're on Council Member Hauser's amendment. We're not on the bill yet. Um, Council Member Johnson, you're recognized. 
Councilmember Johnston, just remember to unmute. I can wait to talk on the bill afterwards because I don't really know what, really what, so I can wait if you want me to just wait and, and talk on the bill itself. Okay, so um, I believe what's going to happen is um, you may want to talk now because I believe there's going to be a motion to defer the bill after the amendments uh, okay. are dealt with. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that the sale of the property has no effect on the tenant lease agreement. By law, if you, who, regardless of the sale of the property, that lease agreement stays in effect, and all of the contents of the lease of, of, of agreement stay in effect. So within each tenant and lease, tenant lease agreement, they're going to have some sort of notice. I, I understand that that's the purpose of this bill is to give people, you know, um, a decent amount of notice before the lease would be terminated. But that's kind of handled in the Tennessee Uniform Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. Um, it's already required that you give them 30 days notice for a 30-day lease or more. But the sale of the property has absolutely nothing to do with the lease itself. If the if the property sells, it doesn't terminate the lease. It it just doesn't. And so notifying somebody at any time of a sale just has no bearing on 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 really anything. And if and so as far as extending that notice of of ending the lease of terminating the lease. That's something that really should probably be handled on the state level. Um, so because there is a Tennessee Uniform Residential Landlord and Tenant Act for that reason, so that all um, all landlords and, and uh, less leases and lessors are, are under the same rules throughout the state, um, that's, that's better. Um, that's, that's a better place to handle this. But notifying of a sale of a property the sale of the property doesn't do anything to, doesn't do anything to the lease. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that. All right, thank you, Councilmember Johnston. Councilmember Porterfield. Uh, thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Um, I, I'm going to speak in support of the legislation. I, I understand that there's still some work that needs to be done on it. I thank the sponsors uh, for the work that they've done and for the intent of the legislation. Last night, I was contacted by one of my constituents who found out on the 5th, after paying their rent, that the owner of the home that they're renting is selling the home and that they have until the end of the month. This is a mother with two children with disabilities, and now she has to try to find appropriate housing with less than 30-day notice. And I understand that there are policies in place to protect people um, from uh, tenant, from my landlords who are uh, the bad players, as we like to call them. And I think it's wonderful that, that my colleagues that own properties are great landlords. I would not expect anything less of y'all. I'm sure that y'all are amazing, and I'm sure that the majority of the landlords are probably amazing, but we do still have bad players, and we need some protection uh, in place for um, our renters. So I'm going to support the legislation, um, and I also would support a deferral on the legislation so that the sponsors will have time to, to get the language right and to make any additional provisions that, that need to be made. Um, but I do think that we need to send a strong message that we're going to stand up for um, our renters, and we're going to stand up for, for people who uh, need that additional assistance. So thank you. All right. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Previous question has been called. Remember, we are on an amendment. We're not on the bill. We're on Council Member Hauser's amendment. This is the previous question to vote on Council Member Hauser's amendment. Previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Opposed, no. no. Council Member Nash votes no on the previous question. No. Okay. Um, any abstentions? Vote is 38 to 1 to 1 on the pre uh, 38 to 1 to 0 on the previous question. Any um, any corrections? I think you had, you had two no's there. Two no's. Councilmember Hancock has voted no on the previous question. No, I'm sorry. I did not vote no. I was just um, referencing that I heard a very familiar voice from Old Hickory. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember. So the vote was 38 to 1 to 0 on the previous question. Any corrections to that? 
All right, hearing none, uh, that's the vote. We are now on Council Member Hauser's amendment. We're not on the bill. Mayor, you, you still didn't get Larry Hager's no. He voted no. Oh. Council Member Hager, did you vote no on the a previous question? No, I said it three times. Okay. All right. So it's uh, so 37 to 2 to 0 on the previous question. It still prevails. All right. All right. So we're now on Council Member Hauser's amendment. Uh, we're voting on Council Member Hauser's amendment to BL 2020-224. All those in favor of Council Member Hauser's amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Okay, we're going to take a roll call vote on this. So, um, uh, Madam Clerk, um, again, the reason we're not voting by I legislate is that we've got, um, we'll do it and then we'll go through a roll call. So, there's no reason to do I legislate because we're just simply going to do a roll call on it anyway. Okay. Madam Clerk. Point of order, Vice Mayor. Mm -hmm. Point of Point order. order. Councilmember Henderson. Respectfully, I recognize that a few of us understandably have some technical issues uh, related to our legislation. I feel that we are, uh, or those of us that did or currently are, may be in the minority. And so I would like to suggest um, that we try our legislate again. I understand that the clerk might need to, if no one registers a vote, to affirm or confirm with those folks. But as we are a 40-member body with this new tool, I think it is worth trying again. I concur with the vice mayor that we do not need to vote I legislate and then subsequently do a full roll call. But just because the clerk chose to do that once, I do not feel that that should thus preclude us from using I legislate at all. Thank you, Councilmember Henderson. The clerk has informed me that in order to check the system, she's going to take a roll call on these votes. Madam Clerk, is there a change in that process? No, Vice Mayor. I think that would be the best process for technical reasons as well as to comply with the Governor Lee's executive order. So, uh, Councilmember Henderson, again, there's no reason to do it by I legislate if the clerk is then going to go through a roll call vote and do the exact same thing. So that was why we're just doing it one way. I, I, yes, sir. But again, respectfully, if, if the clerk could explain that more fully. So I understand if we are all registering yes, no, abstain. If, uh, Madam Clerk, respectfully, if you see somebody did not vote, um, I mean, I... I Mr. Vice Mayor. Yeah. This Councilman Roden. Oh, hold on, hold on, Councilmember Roden. You're not recognized yet. We've got a discussion going on. Councilmember Henderson is. Councilmember Henderson, that was one issue. Um, my computer started updating right during the middle of our meeting. I did not ask it to. I could not stop it, to, and it is still updating. So I would have no way. I'm on my personal computer now. I wouldn't have I to legislate if I wanted it right now or not. Okay. Thank you, Council I, I, Councilmember Roden. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, hold on, hold on. We've got 40 members of the council. Not everybody can talk at the same time. So Madam Clerk has told us that she cannot do this through I legislate. You can vote, and we can do it that way, but you're going to vote, and then she's going to go through the roll again. So um, we can do it that way if you all want, but you're going to waste some time voting on I legislate because she feels like it is not capable yet of doing, of taking it that way. Councilman Roten has just indicated that he can't even do it that way. So I know this is technically challenged and technically difficult, but we can do it both ways, but we're going to spend a few minutes voting on something, then you're going to repeat the vote again. So at this point, unless the clerk says that we're ready to proceed through I legislate, then the only reason not to do it that way, there's no reason to do it that way because she's going to call you, she's going to go through a roll call vote anyway. Madam Clerk, am I saying something wrong? That's what you told me. Uh, I'll defer to you, Vice Mayor. This is really your decision. Um, since we weren't able to post the vote to the panels, 
for um, persons who aren't on this WebEx call, then then that is a way for them to know what the votes are. But uh, this is not really my decision to make, Vice Mayor. So I defer to you. And if you prefer that I do not do that, then I will not do that. Well, obviously, Madam Clerk, this is a waste of time to be um, voting twice and having it through I legislate and then having a roll call vote. Doesn't make any sense to do it twice. Um, if we can do it through I legislate, then I would concur with Council Member Henderson. I think we should do it that way. And then you should call on anybody who cannot vote through the system. But we don't need to roll call everyone again a second time. That just seems like a waste of effort. So if you're telling me that the I legislate program can actually vote that way, then I would recommend we use the system that we all were given to use and, and vote that way. But then you will need to call the names, just the names of those individuals who can't have access to the system. Do you have that list? Yes, I will. Okay. Then um, I'm going to go with what Council Member Henderson said. Uh, we're going to use the system that we were given to us. And um, so, Madam Clerk, I would ask you to open up the machines. And um, members of the Council, if you have uh, the ability to use your machines that you have been given, then I would ask that you vote by I legislate before the vote is recorded. Then, Madam Clerk, I would uh, have you call on those individuals that don't show up in the system and get their votes and then give me the tabulation. Madam Clerk, you ready to vote? I was, Vice Mayor. If I can just have one more moment. Point of information. Council Member Lee. Would you please state again exactly what we're voting on before you vote? Uh, we are voting on uh, Council Member Hauser's amendment. Uh, we're not voting on a bill. We're not voting. We're simply voting on one amendment to a bill. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All the talking back and forth threw me off. I understand. It's mm -hmm. Council Member Hauser's amendment, and if we get to the other amendment, and then we're going to defer this whole thing. So we are voting on a simple amendment that Council Member Hauser has put on a bill. Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready. Mr. President, while the clerk is doing that, did I hear correctly that she's going to comply with open meetings? She's going to have to read off every member's vote afterward anyway? It was our understanding that she does not have to read off every name, yeah. just, just the Thank ones you. that that are not eligible to vote for some reason like as Councilmember Roten said, doesn't have the ability to vote by I legislate. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can open the machines now, Vice Mayor. Okay, uh, open up the machines, uh, vote by I legislate. But again, Madam Clerk, do not record the votes until we record the, we actually call out the names of those who, individuals who cannot vote by I legislate. The board doesn't show that. This looks like the entire bill. So, council members, are you voting? I can try to stop the vote. I had already, yes, I do agree that it appears to be a vote to, it says vote to approve. It's not a vote so to approve, it's a vote to approve an amendment. An amendment. You're not on the bill. You're on Council Member Hauser's amendment to the bill. Okay. Members of the council, you're not voting on the bill. You're voting on Council Member Hauser's amendment to the bill. Madam Clerk, do you have the votes in? Yes, Vice Mayor. I'll need to, actually, I still see more votes coming in. Um, can I ask a Councilman Glover, how shall I record your vote? Council Member Glover? No. <clears throat> Council Member Glover votes no. Council Member Toombs. Council Member Toombs? Councilmember Toombs, your uh, microphone is uh, is muted.
Councilmember Toom. I need a point of order. Are we on? Are we on the amendment here, or the bill as a whole? <laughs> we are on Councilmember Hauser's amendment. Councilmember Toombs. Uh, she may be having technical problems, so she can't vote. So, uh, who else do you need? Eh. Councilmember yes. Council Member Toombs' uh, computer is frozen. Councilmember Toombs votes yes. Councilmember Van Rees. Councilmember Van Rees. Yes on the amendment. Councilmember Van Rees votes yes on the amendment. Councilmember Evans. No. Councilmember Roten. No. Councilmember Roberts. No, but it appears I'm voting on I legislate. Are you not able to, is it not showing up? I haven't recorded any votes coming from you and you've said that each time, so. Um, okay. I'm uh, still yeah, I can't comment further than, <laughs> and I agree you said that and I'm not getting those. All right. Uh, Council, yeah, Councilmember Vercher. Councilmember Vercher. Councilmember Vercher is recorded as not voting. Um, Madam Clerk. Um, I'm not sure who was uh, co uh, coming in just now. Was that Councilmember Vercher? Councilmember Vercher, are you on? I'm abstaining. Okay, Councilmember Vercher abstains. Councilmember Lee. No. Those are all the votes, Vice Mayor. Okay, Madam Clerk, you've got the votes, so uh, you're going to have to tabulate them because we don't have them. 20 in favor, 14 against. It doesn't get 21, it still counts as two. And five abstentions. Okay. So the vote is 24, 14 against, five abstentions. The amendment passes on second reading. Okay. Back to you, Councilmember Taylor. There's a second, there's another amendment. Yes, I would like to add the second amendment, which would only, uh, that would clearly state that this is residential tenants. All right. So, Councilmember Taylor. Uh, moves uh, his amendment properly seconded. Uh, you heard an explanation back to you for any more additional explanation? Councilmember Taylor? Nope, I would like to uh, just move them. Uh, okay, so Councilmember Taylor moves the amendment. Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. I'm sorry, that was left over from last time. All right. Uh, Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Councilmember Glover. Called question. Previous question has been called on the amendment. All in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed no. Aye. Opposed no. Any abstentions? Previous question prevails 39-4, zero against, zero <laughs> abstentions. Any, um, do you have any, um, any changes? We are voting on Councilmember Taylor's amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. 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 Okay, we are going to be um, again on the board. All right, Madam Clerk, get the machines ready. Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready to open up the machines.
Again, remember we are voting on an amendment by Council Member Taylor. We're not voting on the bill. Madam Clerk, your uh, microphone is also muted. Oh, thank you. The voting system is defaulting to the motion stating adopt as amended, which is not correct. It should say motion to adopt amendment B. Okay, but you can still take the vote on the amendment? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so is the machine ready to vote? Yes. Okay, I'm going to start the machine now. Okay. Members of the um, council, uh, you can go to iLegislate and vote. Vice Mayor, point of order, please. Are we voting on the deferral motion? No, nope. uh, we are voting on Council Member Taylor's amendment. Uh, the deferral uh, motion, we are not on the deferral motion yet. We're voting on Council Member Taylor's amendment. Um, my apologies, but not Councilwoman Houser's amendment, the, the second amendment that Councilman Taylor brought forth. That, correct? Is, that is correct. That is correct. Councilman, All right, thank you. Council Member Houser's amendment uh, passed just a little while ago. Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready to call people's names. I will. It looks like about half of the members' votes have come in. Were the machines reset? Because I voted and now my vote is like it started over. So I need to revote. I'm seeing the head shaking. Yes, please. Wonderful. So glad we got a new system. Point of order, just to confirm, we are revoting again on the second uh, amendment. We are voting on Council Member Taylor's amendment to his yes, bill. Yes, and I voted, I voted before and the machine came back up, so we're voting again. Uh, apparently, you're, uh, yeah, you have to vote again. Okay. Okay, Council Member Glover, how should I record your vote? Council Member Glover? No. Council Member Timms? Yes. Council Member Evans? No. Council Member Roten? No. Council Member Roberts? No. Council Member Vercher? I'm abstaining. Council Member Lee? Yes. 23 in favor, 11 against, 5 abstentions. Vote is 23 for, 11 against, 5 abstentions. Uh, amendment, uh, the second amendment by Councilmember Taylor passes. Councilmember Taylor, you're recognized on your bill as amended. Thank you, I would like to make a motion to move the bill as, oh, excuse me, to defer the bill 
to the July 2nd meeting, the first meeting in June. So the motion is to defer to uh, the second meeting in first meeting in July. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to humbly request that everybody vote yes on the deferral motion. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Allen, you're recognized <laughs> on the deferral motion. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request that this also be referred to the Affordable Housing Committee. Okay. Council Member uh, Taylor, you have any trouble with that? No, that's great. All right. Council Member Hancock, you're recognized. Call the question. Previous question has been called. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Previous question prevails 39-4, zero Why? against. It's so smiling. <laughs> um, so people's mics are open. Is there a question? 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. That's the vote on, um, that was the previous question. We are now on the motion to defer to the uh, first meeting in July. All those in favor of the deferral? All those in favor yes. of the So you're all going to need to to uh, close yes. your mics. Okay. Yes. Then I'll ask for the previous, then I'll ask yes. for the vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Opposed, no. Point of order, Mr. Ma Mr. Vice Mayor, point of order. Point of order. Who's asking the point of order? Uh, Burton, Council Member Allen, just to clarify, this is to, to defer and to refer to the Affordable Housing Committee. That's correct. Thank you. So um, we're going to have to vote again because i got to make sure I got the votes right. Um, all those in favor of the motion to defer to the first meeting in July with a re-referral to the Affordable Housing Committee, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Uh, to defer to the first meeting in July, referred to the Affordable Housing Committee. Okay, any corrections to that? All right, then we proceed ahead. BL 2022-27, sponsors are Withers, Mendes, and others. Ordinance authorizing the granting of permanent and temporary construction easements to Piedmont Natural Gas Company on certain property, property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? Council Member Hancock, Parks and Library. Parks, Libraries, and Arts, voted as unanimously four in favor, zero against. All right. Park Planning and Zoning, Council Member Murphy. 15 in favor, zero against. Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Vice Mayor, can you restate the bill number, please? Uh, BL 2020-227. Thank you, sir. Uh, Public Works Committee recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member Withers, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Okay. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like, actually, if I could restate my motion, I'd like to move approval with a re-referral to the Parks, Library, and Arts Committee. Thank you. Okay, so it's a motion to approve with a re-referral to the Parks and Library Committee? Yes, please. Okay. All right, that's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on uh, the approval? Council Member Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I hope you can hear me now. We can hear you. Oh, great. Um, just clarification, and I don't know who can answer the question. I've always wondered why we have uh, easement and right of way and things like that that has no financial value to it, where it looks as if we're giving property away for people to use and we're not charging anything. And I've always been told that uh, public works does not assign values to this uh, easement. And then when I'm looking at the one from Piedmont, there is value to it. So 
how do they determine which one has a value, which one doesn't? And I feel like we do so many of these that if we're charging something uh, for properties downtown on Charlotte Avenue, little, little places, I don't know. I'm just trying to understand, I guess, since I'm new at this, that which one has value, which one doesn't, who assigned the value, and things like that. Thank you. Mr. Cooper, do you want to try to answer that question? I'm not sure that I can answer that question. Um, this one definitely has value because it's a construction um, easement and a permanent easement that runs across a piece of property as opposed to a right of way, which, you know, may be a, a few foot strip. Um, I, I can't explain um, the valuation that, that may go into that from public work standpoint. Uh, Councilmember Sawara, the best I can tell you is that you probably need to talk to the folks at Public Works and they can probably explain how they do it. Okay? I will do that. Thank you. All right. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, Vice Mayor, as Chair of Public Works, I just wanted to express that I will follow up with Council Lady Suara uh, about that. I'd be happy to be of assistance offline. All right. Thank you. Anybody else in the queue? Seeing none, this is a motion to approve with a re-referral back to the Parks, Library, and Arts Committee. Uh, nobody else in the queue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Uh, the bill is approved on second reading and re-referred back to Parks and Library, 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. BL 2020-230 uh, by Council Members Parker, Murphy, and others, an ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the metropolitan government by banning a portion of alley number 312 right away from North 9th Street to alley number 278. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I think I might need one more committee report. That's correct. Planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. Fifteen in favor, zero against. Back to you, Councilmember Parker. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move for approval. All right. Uh, move for approval properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Bill passes on second reading 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Bill passes on second reading. BL 20, uh, BL 2020-232 by Council Members O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government by banning a portion of alley number 146 right of way from Lafayette Street to Elm Street. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, need to get committee reports here, please. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Planning voted to 15 in favor, zero against, uh, to defer this to the first meeting in July. Okay. Traffic and parking, Councilmember right. O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We followed suit with five in favor, zero against, for a deferral to the first meeting in July. Okay, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. What do you want to do with your bill? I want to move for a deferral to the first meeting in July with a brief explanation. All right. Um, proper motion, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. I, we. we uh, I'm still trying to get information about whether timing of necessity here has changed. I will follow up with Convention Center. We've got a staff report uh, from traffic and parking, but I still want to get a little bit more information before we go forward with this, given the nature of the concerns expressed in the commission. So I will report back to the committees when I've got that information, but I'd like just a little bit more time on this one. Thanks. All right. So the motion is to defer one meeting, properly second. Nobody in the queue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. One meeting or first meeting? Uh, first meeting in July. Any abstentions? 
Seeing none, the vote is 39-4, zero against, uh, zero abstentions to defer to the first meeting in July. <coughs> BL 2020-235, ordinance amending Metropolitan Code sections 2.62.040F and Metropolitan Code section 12.56.170 to increase special event permit fees. Uh, that's sponsored by Mendes, Henderson, and others. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. You go. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Um, the Budget and Finance Committee report is in. We need a report from Public Works, please. Public Works. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, this uh, bill has uh, had quite a lot of discussion in our committee, and I think rightly so. And um, we've got some good um, information uh, from staff, and I uh, intend uh, to amend this bill. And as such, our committee voted to defer one meeting, none in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Mendez. I'll move to defer one meeting. All right. The motion is to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Bill is deferred 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Bill is deferred one meeting. Uh, BL 2020-285 by Council Member Stiles, Toombs, and others. Uh, ordinance requiring employees of essential businesses interfacing with the public to wear appropriate face coverings. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I have a substitute, so I'd like to move for approval and then introduce the bill. All right, so you've got, um, it's been approved with an amendment by Health and Hospital, so it's already been through the committee. Um, you are moving a substitute. It's actually, okay. So it's actually not a substitute, it's a late it's amendment. amendment. Correct. Okay. So, late amendment. Okay, so you will need to sus move to suspend the rules to get the amendment in front of the body. So um, just uh, what you'll need to do is move to suspend and I'll come back to you and you can give me a quick explanation of what the amendment does. Excellent, thank you. I'd like to move to suspend the rules at this time. Okay, can you give me a, uh, give the, the council a brief explanation of what the amendment does? Yes, so from our previous conversation during the last council session, the amendment now includes the CDC requirements, as Councilmember Van Rees had suggested. In addition, uh, Councilmember Welsh's suggestion about putting a time limit on this. So there is a state of emergency until June 30th. My bill would then go into effect at the end of the state of emergency to make it continue for another 60 days so that as we're still figuring out how to handle the virus, essential workers would still be covered. All right, so uh, Council Member Stiles has moved to suspend the rules to get this amendment, which is late filed in front of the body at this point. Um, Council Member Rosenberg, did this come before rules? Council Member Rosenberg? It did, Mr. President. The, commi uh, the committee did not have any issues with it. Okay, thank you, Council Member Rosenberg. All right, so Council Member Stiles has moved to suspend the rules. Is there any objection? All right, hearing none, Council Member Stiles, you're on your amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, approve my amendment. Okay, so the motion is to, uh, to approve the amendment, properly seconded. You've already discussed it. Is there any uh, discussion on the amendment? Council Member Glover, you're recognized. I just want a clarification. So after June 30th, this would extend it through July and August. Is that what I heard correctly? Correct. And then what would happen is we could do a, a revolution beyond that if the time needed to be extended, depending on how things are going societally and dealing with life. And who would be the enforcers of this? This it would be the health department. You would still report it in the same way that you report it now. If you go into a store and you see that there are employees that are not wearing uh, masks or face coverings of some sort, you can call the health department. And while the health department has had phone calls, they oftentimes call locations. They're not always going out, so it's not going to be overly burdensome. 
All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Glover. Anybody else in the queue? Oh, I do have people in the queue. Councilmember Hancock? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so on May 15th, which is not very long ago, the Metro Health Department issued a new health order requiring all employees to wear cloth face covering or mask at work. So why would we then also require a mask that we ask the health department to enforce when they're already doing that? Point of order, we are still on the amendment, correct? Um, yes. So, Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So, as I said previously, what this bill does, yes, it would go into it would go into effect after a third reading if it passes. It also carries on beyond the state of emergency, which will be ending as it stands right now at the end of next month. We do not have a vaccine currently for this virus, and as we are all still meeting electronically, it's still an issue. So this bill will just continue to cover our essential workers and make sure that they're being safe and, and also the public is being protected. As I said, this is something that can, we can do a resolution on as we grow closer to that end date at the end of August, but this is a preventative measure. Councilmember Hancock. Um, I'd be in favor of it if it was a resolution now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Councilmember Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I, I want to thank the Council Lady very much for um, elevating and bringing attention to the importance of um, uh, wearing masks um, because I know from our community standpoint, there was and has uh, been some mixed messaging on that, you know, at, at uh, federal and uh, state level. Um, and I appreciate this is following uh, the, the CDC guidelines and you know, as, as we have come to understand it. So I just want to uh, commend her for um, elevating awareness and, and pushing this issue uh, forward. Um, I, I do have some concern and I wonder if she can kind of speak to uh, the amendment particularly um, I am comfortable at this point uh, with our health department um, issuing these orders. I am less comfortable um, with us legislating this, um, and that um, I, uh, because I think already, uh, unfortunately, we have seen at the national level that uh, wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, sadly, is becoming politicized. Um, and so um, I feel very confident with it is entirely within the purview of our health department and the space of public safety um, that we really have uh, almost stronger legs to stand on in encouraging the mask wearing. And so I wonder um, if the councilwoman could please uh, uh, speak to that and kind of how that or her amendment factors into that. Um, please, thank you. Councilmember Stiles, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself. Thank you. I I was muted and I didn't do it myself. So sorry about that. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So to your point, and I can understand, Councilmember Henderson, that the health department has stepped in and has begun to enforce it. My concern is what happens when the executive order ends and we still don't have a solution, and and more so that that has been the point of this legislation and I have spoken to the health department. I spoke to them when I initially put this forth before they decided to uh, bring masks into the executive order. And clearly they do, they see the benefit of it and I understand that it is politicized. I am still very concerned about those constituents that do want to wear masks and want to feel protected and especially our frontline workers, especially those that are, uh, that, that have been uh, affected by COVID-19 on their jobs. I just want to make sure that they continue to be protected. Council Member Henderson. I, I appreciate that. I, I really do think we're on the same page in that regard, but um, similar to what uh, Council Lady Hancock had inquired, um, uh, I realized that we um, kind of prospect we are assuming that, um, that the uh, emergency order may end June 30th. 
And so the difference between, say, a bill and a resolution, and if we feel at the time, um, uh, or I don't know, perhaps if um, uh, Mr. Cooper could answer, um, once the state of emergency um, was in um, at perhaps the state level, would that then preclude our city county consolidated health department from continuing to issue public health orders related to masks? Um, I, I would think even after the state of emergency had concluded that we could still at that time uh, via our health department um, incorporate all um, the, the, the good work of, of the councilwoman and do that through um, uh, a, a public health order. Uh, the health director has very broad authority to um, in, implement regulations to prevent infectious disease. Um, so I, I would think if there was still, if, if in his medical opinion there was still a problem, then um, they could extend the order even if the, um, the uh, order dealing with the, the pandemic had expired. I appreciate that. And thus, um, Vice Mayor, then I would redirect the question um, uh, to Councilwoman Stiles, again, fully supportive of folks wearing masks and having a public health order um, uh, uh, for uh, certain um, folks to, to do so. Um, but uh, if she could then speak to uh, why a, 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 a rereading a bill is necessary rather than a resolution or rather than a, a public health order, um, especially now since we're hearing from um, Mr. Cooper um, that even once the state of emergency ends June 30th, um, the health department can continue to have um, a very um, explicit and specific education around and asserting you know, the, the wearing of masks. All right, so she may have to speak to that later because we have to go on at this point. Uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. It took me a minute to find my mute button. I, I just would say the same thing. I feel like uh, the administration has worked hard to make their decisions based on data and that the health department has provided us good direction. I was very comfortable with this amendment when it referred to um, or We've referred to the order. I'm, I'm, at this point, I need clarification on whether that was the state order or our local order. But I feel like the guidance um, should be coming from our local health department based on um, our conditions and that they are uh, a better um, uh, judge of when we're ready or not. And I appreciate Council Member Stiles' concern that, that we um, have people wearing masks that are facing the public, and I, uh, um, I support um, the the bill that says that that is um, necessary to do, but I am concerned with with um, us deciding when that deadline needs to be ahead of the the health department. I would um, I would be more comfortable if the amendment had more direct reference to um, allowing uh, Dr. Caldwell to make that call rather than 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 us. Councilmember Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So when I was inquiring about how to go about this in terms of implementing a, the, a time frame moving forward, uh, what I had been told was a resolution could be done after the initial time frame that, that I have suggested. I am not uh, opposed to having a resolution. And if this is, if that's something, I, I guess my, my biggest concern is this, there have been Sometimes where making sure that, that certain protections have, have happened have taken a bit of time. And I don't want us to run into a lag or a lapse, I should say, of that while we wait for another decision to be made we're leaving people uncovered and exposed. But again, I am not opposed to doing a resolution if that will help this move forward. Councilmember Allen. Um, to me, it's not an issue of whether it's an ordinance or resolution. I, I, to me, it's, a, it's a, an, an, a question of having 
a medical expert make the decision on when the date is as opposed to us coming up with um, a, a somewhat arbitrary date of, of August. Um, so if perhaps we could say we'll extend it beyond the state based on recommendations from our um, local, or if we can put something in place that, that can, um, I guess, get ahead of the time lag, which I understand your concern with, with just the, the time it makes for decisions to be made, but I'm, I'm just concerned with a bunch of council members deciding August is the date when there are, there are doctors and medical people and, and infectious disease experts that I think can provide us with really good guidance on what what we know is um, an appropriate time to finally decide it's time to let go of those masks. And it, it may be a year from now. Um, and I, I believe that they will will, um, will provide really good guidance in that. And I would, I would love to have a reference to their um, decision making as opposed to just our, our date. Uh, Vice Mayor, may I respond? Uh, yeah, Council Member Stiles. Thank you very much. So I have spoken extensively with Dr. Caldwell about, about the mask and about this bill and the desire to move this beyond, to move this beyond the executive order. So it was, for me, a short time frame to come up with August 31st, just to be where we were. But to your suggestion of, of having a resolution where we could we can check in with Dr. Caldwell and then extend it from that point, I am totally fine to add that language in. Okay, thank you. Make my fellow council members more comfortable. That is totally fine. All right, thank you, council member. Uh, Councilman Mendez, you're recognized. Call the question. All right, uh, previous question has been called. Um, order, point of order, that's on the amendment, correct? We are, I'm going back to my agenda to make sure we are simply, um, this is on the amendment, that is correct. So the previous question is just getting us to vote on the amendment. Uh, we're on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Uh, Mr. no. Mr. Glover, who, that was Mr. Glover and who else? Who was the other no? Mr. Hager? Mr. Hager votes no. Any abstentions? 37 for, two against, and zero abstentions. Did I get that right? On the previous question. All right, previous question prevails. We're on the amendment by Council Member uh, Stiles. On her amendment, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 All right. It didn't sound like that many no's, so I need to know who are no's. If you will say if you're a no. Glover, no. Glover, no. Hager, no. Hager, no. No. Swamp, no. I mean, I think I, I, I heard hurt no. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Who else is in the no? A Druffle. Druffle. And Swope. Come. Swope is the no. Correct. I've got Glover, Hager, Hurt, Druffle, and Swope as no's. Anybody else? Young is a no. Um, wait a minute. Council Member Young, what were you? Are you a no? Yes, I'm a no. Okay, Council Member Young is a no. Anybody? Yes, yes I'm a no. Council Member Evans? Yes, I'm a no. Okay. Johnston is a no as well. Johnston. Hancock. Okay. So I've got Evans as a no, Young as a no, Glover as a no, Hager as a no, Hurt as a no, Druffle as a no, Swope as a no, Johnston as a no, and Hancock as a no. Anybody else? Rosenberg. Rosenberg? Was that you? That's me. Rosenberg is a no. Roten is a no. So wait a minute. Roten, uh, Councilman Roten, did you vote no? I did, Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Robert, thank you, no. Sorry, Angie. <laughs> That's okay. Roberts is a no. 
So I've got 12 no's at this point. Anybody else? Vice Mayor, it was uh, Councilman Henderson. It was my intent to abstain on this amendment, please. Okay. Henderson is an abstention. All right. So I've got uh, 12 no's, one abstention. So I've got um, 26 4. This is just on the amendment. 26 4, 12 against, one abstention. Does that sound right? I don't think you have 26 people here right now, do we? In addition to this. Uh, Councilmember Hancock, excuse me, say that again. You're assuming everyone else is here and voting. Uh, yeah, at this point, I haven't been told anything different. So 26, we have 39 people voting on this um, in the council tonight. So 26 for, 12 against, one abstention. That's the vote. The amendment passes. Um, so we are now, Council Member Stiles, we're now back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I do have a question um, pertaining to uh, Council Member Allen's question about changing the language in terms of the time. Is that something that I could do? Uh, so, Council Member, it's actually you need to tell me what do you want to do with your bill. If you have a question about your bill, you may want to defer. But are you? Uh, what is your is your question to Mr. Cooper about your bill? I think the the step the step to take to be able to change it. So I guess I should defer it so that I can pull it in and rework it. All right, so how long do you want to defer your bill? I'll defer one meeting. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Gamble on the deferral. Uh, no, my, my, I had my hand up before we had that vote, so I don't have any discussion on the deferral. Okay, so we are on uh, a motion to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion is to defer one meeting. Passes 39 4, zero against, a zero abstention. Any corrections to that? Bill is deferred one meeting. We're on BL 2020 286 by Councilmember Mendes. It's the budget ordinance, uh, Metropolitan Government. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, the Budget and Finance Committee uh, recommended to defer. There was 12 in favor of that and zero against. And with that, I'd like to defer with a brief explanation. All right. So a motion is for one meeting properly. Second, and back to you, Council Member Mendes. All right. So um, the operating budget bill will be on public hearing on June 2nd, and uh, especially in this um, to period when it's so difficult to interact with our constituents. Um, we're going to have to work hard. The council office will hopefully get us information this week about what the public needs to do to interact for the public hearing. And please get that out through all your communications channels. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is that uh, uh, Budget and Finance Committee Vice Chair Toombs and I um, put in the um, uh, substitute in the amendments package um, some language at pages 26 to 29 um, that reflects we're not going to move it tonight um, but reflects language that we would like to see in any budget we pass and the, the two things that it would do um, would be one to have the council create a COVID-19 financial oversight committee which would deal with how the CARES Act money gets spent and then the second addition we'd like into the sub into whatever budget we pass is that by August 15, 2020, the director of finance would update the projected revenue for fiscal 21. The point of that second part is that if there's some change in federal law, uh, money we would get from the federal government or the state government or revenue is coming in stronger than predicted, the, the last time we could get an update about that and still potentially do something about the tax levy um, would be um, August 15. So these two things are things we're gonna seek to have in any version of the budget we pass, and we just put the language out there now in the amendments package so y'all could be thinking about it. And with that, I um, renew the motion to defer for one meeting. All right, so the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. 
Nobody in the queue. All those in favor of the deferral say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Budget bill is deferred one meeting, 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Uh, bill is deferred. Uh, bill 2020-287, this is the tax levy, ordinance establishing the tax levy in the General Services District for fiscal year 2020-2021, declaring the amount required for the annual operating budget of the Urban Services District, pursuant to section 6.07 of the Metropolitan Charter. Councilmember Mendes, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. The Budget and Finance Committee recommended to defer 12 in favor, zero against. Um, this always needs to go hand in hand immediately after the operating budget. So I will too um, also move to defer this one one meeting. Okay, properly seconded. Um, Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I had my hand up on the last one, but I think it'll work on this one as well. Okay. Can we ask Mr. Cooper, please? Uh, because I think we got some conflicting dates on what our drop dead date was on the uh, perhaps changing the uh, tax rate. I, I thought it was a little bit later than August 15th, but could we get the supporting uh, documents from the departments who say that's when it needs to be uh, and brought into us? And then I would just like for us to all have, if I may, um, you know, we have to have our budget uh, completed by June 30th at 1159 p.m. Otherwise, if we don't, if we don't uh, adopt the substitute at that point, then the mayor's budget would go into effect. But we actually have the entire month of June, should we need it, uh, given the amount of uh, the, the substantial tax increase that the mayor has proposed. I would just like a, a clarification that I'm correct on that date. And then, as I said, Vice Mayor, uh, just to get a letter from the department who said we need to have it by in by August 15th in order to uh, meet the deadlines that would be required. Thank you. Mr. Cooper. So the no department said August 15th. That is uh, language that was put in the um, substitute budget draft for the finance director to give us a revenue estimate. The trustee's office has said we have to pass a revised tax levy if we're going to not later than September 1st so that they can get the tax bills prepared, printed, and mailed by the first week in October. So then, Mr. Cooper, then is August 15th, I'm, I'm assuming that's our last meeting in, in the month of August. The, I don't have my calendar. The council would need to have three special meetings uh, in order to do that. Okay. All right. All right, very good. That, I just that, that that's what I wanted clarification on. Thank you, sir. Right, and then with regards to the uh, end of June, June thirtieth is. Am I correct on that? Uh, yes, sir. That we have to have this completed by June thirtieth at eleven fifty nine p.m. Yes, correct. Mr. Mr. Cooper. Yeah, the answer is yes. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Mendes, you're recognized. Um, those are those are good questions, and uh, just to put a little more meat on the bones about um, the deadline for changing the tax levy, uh, we have in fact been told in the council chamber mid September or late September um, this year and previous years, and uh, and I over the last several weeks I wanted to make sure that was real because um, I I would hate to go change the levy on say September 10 and then find out that it was too late. Um, at my request, uh, Councilman Cooper, or I'm sorry, Council Director Cooper um, interacted with the trustee's office and found out that September 1 was the date, uh, and they went so far as talking to their printer um, to, to get a drop dead date. And uh, if we were gonna handle that through regular meetings um, to accommodate that, we'd have to have first reading um, at the end of July, um, which really, frankly, doesn't give us any more information. And so in consultation with the vice mayor and Mr. Cooper, I went ahead and uh, proposed this August 15 for the revenue projection, which would give all of July, half of August. And as Mr. Cooper alluded to, if information indicated that the levy could be different at that point, we would have to um, put uh, a couple special meetings um, into the second half of August to pull it off by the beginning of September. And then the other thing, um, obviously, um, it's subject to the will of the body, um, but like previous years, uh, the intention that I have as uh, chair of the Budget and Finance Committee is for us to pass 
the operating budget in the regularly scheduled second meeting in June. Um, and uh, if, if it's the will of the body to do something else, um, that's fine. But uh, the target date to pass the operating budget is June 16. All right, thank, thank you, you Councilmember Mendes. Councilmember Glover, did you put your hand back up? I did, sir, thank you. All right, so I, I want to just confirm. So with it having to be three re, uh, three readings, we would get the first one on the 15th, and we would have to, uh, of August, I'm talking about if we change the tax levy, uh, and then we would have to have a couple of special meetings. Is that what I heard correctly? I just want clarification. Let me, let me uh, Council try Mayor again, Mendes. Vice Mayor. Um, so this would require, if it ends up in the budget ordinance, that the budget director would deliver to us on August 15 an updated revenue projection. And then we as a body would have to decide whether we were going to um, try to um, change the tax levy. And if that was the case, we'd have to get all three readings in between the time that we got the um, revenue projection from finance on the 15th and September 1st, um, I'm, uh, you know, there, there's a push and pull here. The earlier we go in August, the more time we would have to squeeze in three readings, but it would be less information. Um, we can talk about whether August 15 is the exact right date. The intention was to get absolutely as much information, even if it meant that we'd have to meet three times in just a couple weeks. All right, thank you, Councilman Mendes. All right, uh, the motion is to defer uh, BL 202287, um, uh, one meeting. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Say no. Any abstentions? Uh, the mo motion to defer is passed 39-4, zero against, and zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Um, BL 2020-287 is deferred one meeting. BL 2020-289 by Council Members Mendes and Henderson, an ordinance creating the positions of Environmental Compliance Supervisor and Water Quality Supervisor. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Thank you. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against, and I need the other committee report. All right, Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Public Works Committee recommended approval, not in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Move approval. Motion is to approve. Uh, got a proper second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Opposed? No. Any abstentions? Vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? Bill passes on second reading, 39-0 to zero to zero. Uh, we're now on bills on third reading. We do have a consent calendar that I can go through, go through these uh, very quickly. Um, I can tell you that everything is on the consent calendar except for two things. Um, the first one, substitute uh, bill BL 2019-78 by Council Councilmember Sledge is not on consent. And BL 2020-255 by Councilmember Stiles is also not on consent. Everything else is on the consent calendar. Anything needs to be bumped off of that? I'm checking. All right, uh, those are the, uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With, with apologies to the sponsor for not being able to talk about things between meetings, I'd, I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about 223 and take that one off the consent as well, please. So Council Member 223 is um, also taken off. All right, anything else? All right, so we've got three bills that are not on the consent calendar. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> Uh, these are bills on the consent calendar, Bill 2020194 by by Councilmember Roberts, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metro Code uh, by amending the 49th and Tennessee specific plan for property located at 1249th Avenue North, approximately 130 feet south of Centennial Boulevard. It's 4.33 acres, Bill 202209 by Councilmember Toombs, 
Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from CL and OR20 to MUGA zoning for properties located at 321, 325, and 329 West Trinity Lane and a portion of West Trinity Lane unnumbered at the northeast corner of Monticello Drive and West Trinity Lane. Uh, BL 2020-214 by Councilmember Roberts. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R40 to R6 zoning for property located at 1201 Watts Terrace at the southeast corner of Watts Terrace and Watts Lane. It's 0.81 acres. BL 2020-217 by Councilmembers Lee and Mendez. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS10 to RM6 zoning for an unnumbered property located on Hobson Pike, approximately 729 feet south of Hamilton Church Road, 5.66 acres. Uh, substitute Bill BL 2020-236, Ordinance to amend Section 16.04.150 and 16.28.230 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding work time restrictions for grading permits. That's by Council Member Sledge. BL 2020-247 by Council Members Murphy and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer main and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 4317 Harding Pike. Uh, BL, substitute bi bill BL 2020-258 by Council Member Van Reese. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to SB zoning for property located at 218 Maplewood Trace, approximately 450, east, uh, 40, 450 feet east of Hillside Road. It's 3.54 acres to permit 48 multifamily residential units. BL 2020-259 by Council Member Glover. Ordinance to amend, amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from R10 to MULA zoning for property located at 304 Old Lebanon Dirt Road Southern terminus of Weber Road is 6.94 acres. <coughs> BL 2020-267 by Council Member Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS20 to RM2 zoning for property located at 1101 Chadwell Drive and Chadwell Drive unnumbered, approximately 520 feet west of South Graycroft Avenue. BL 2020-270 by Council Member Van Rees. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from OG and RS20 to RM9 zoning for a portion of property located at 1022 South Graycroft Avenue, approximately 460 feet west of South Graycroft Avenue, uh, 7.70 acres. BL 2020-278 by Council Members Benedict, Mendes, and others. Ordinance approving a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and City Road Chapel United Methodist Church for office space at 701 Gallatin Pike South in Madison. BL 2020-280 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing AEG MGM Nashville LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground and aerial encroachments in the right of way of 913 Church Street, BL 2020-281 by Rutherford, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located north of Burkett Place Drive and east of Nolensville Pike in Williamson County, also known as Burkett Commons Phase Two. <clears throat> BL 2022-82 by Bradford, Murphy, and Henderson. <clears throat> Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to abandon an existing public water main and easements for property located at one terminal drive. Uh, BL 2022-83 by Van Rees, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing public water main and to accept new public water main and fire hydrant assembly for property located at 600 Creative Way, and BL 2020-284 by Gamble, Murphy, and Henderson, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Dell Mere Drive Stormwater Improvement Project for five, pro for five properties located at 1334, 1335, 1328, 1338, Mere Drive, and 4101 Mere Court. Those are the bills on consent calendar on third reading. Does anything need to be bumped off? <clears throat> Vice Mayor, I believe uh, Councilman Hager needs to be listed as abstaining on 259. Okay. C uh, Council Member Hager uh, will be listed as abstaining on BL 2020-259. All right. So I need some a couple of committee reports. Uh, Codes Fair and Farmers Market. Council Member Sledge. I need a report on 2020-236. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. On 2022-36, the committee voted four in favor, zero against for approval. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Sledge. And Councilmember Murphy, I need a report on about eight of your bills. Councilmember Murphy. Correct. So, um, Planning, Zoning, and Historical voted 15 in favor, zero against on uh, 194, 209, 214, 217, 230, that didn't come to us, just kidding, 247, 258, 267, 270, 278, 280, 281, 282, 283, and 284. And on 259, we voted 14 in favor, zero against, one abstention. Okay, so um, we okay leaving it on there? It's an abstention. On that one, okay, because that's the one. That's Councilmember Hager. All right, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. We're just checking to make sure that that was okay. <clears throat> All right, um, so Councilmember Murphy, would you, um, because you were the last person to speak, would you move uh, passage of all those bills on the consent calendar? With all the committee reports in. I move passage for the consent calendar on third reading. All right, uh, second. That's properly seconded. And with the exception of uh, 259, where Councilmember Hager is going to be listed as abstaining, um, we have a motion and a second to approve all those bills on third reading. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 And aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Any abstentions? Consent calendar passes 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? That's the vote. Okay, we've got three bills left on tonight's calendar. Substitute bill, uh, BL 2019-78 by Council Member Sledge. Uh, ordinance to amend section 17.16.070 of the code to impose a minimum distance requirement for new short-term rental properties non-owner occupied from churches, schools, daycares, and parks. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'll start with my committee report. Um, code voted four in favor, zero against, for a one meeting deferral. Okay. And I got planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy? Would be 15 in favor, zero against, a one meeting deferral. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for one meeting deferral, please. Okay. The motion is to defer one meeting properly. Seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Uh, bill is deferred one meeting, 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions. 39 to zero to zero. All right, uh, BL 2020-223 as amended, Council Member Murphy. Ordinance of amending section 7.16.110 of the Metropolitan Code to provide a mechanism for retail liquor establishments to obtain an exemption from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a certificate of compliance upon approval of the Metropolitan Council by resolution. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. With all committee reports in, I'd like to move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Councilmember Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, I appreciate that. Um, I had had some questions that I had relayed to um, Hannah just with regard to um, some discussion that we had at the at the last meeting um, with uh, with reference to whether this was a more open process than using an SP, which was the example that the, the sponsor had um, had not been comfortable with as a way to um, to enable an area where it seemed appropriate for a retail liquor establishment um, to be there. And um, I am um, still have questions about whether we have a full understanding of what it is we're doing here. Um, one issue, I think that, that when we think of how we do this for a beer permit, that often is a restaurant that is expanding their business to be able to sell, sell beer. Um, this is not what we're doing with this one. This is not restaurants asking to sell liquor. That's, that's a whole different thing that's regulated by the state. This is retail liquor sales, which is simply liquor stores. Um, and I think, Perhaps where the issues come up is it would be lovely to have 
a wine shop in a mixed use development and that runs into an issue with space, re space distance requirements from um, residential units. Um, and that I believe can be handled by an SP that takes care of that. But in terms of if a retail liquor establishment wants to locate close to a school or a playground or a church, currently um, metro distance requirements have set standards for that and neighbors rely on that and it, it is not something they have to be vigilant about. Um, I have a little bit of concern if we're opening the door for something where now it, we put the burden on the neighbors um, to watch out for the red and white signs um, and if it's summer and they're not going past their school um, or it's winter and they're not going past their park, they might they may not uh, be aware that there's been a proposal made to put a liquor store down the street um, or in close proximity to their school or playground. Um, so I would I would simply ask if perhaps there could be one more deferral um, just where I could continue the conversation with um, Hannah that I understand what's going on and perhaps um, through through the appropriate channels um, work with the sponsor on just if there are other things that we can do that will accomplish what her goals are, because this feels like a, a broader opening than may have been what's intended. So I think I'm, at, I'm uh, making a motion for one meeting deferral, hoping that's a, a friendly motion. All right, so Council Member um, Allen has moved, has moved to defer this one meeting, and I think I heard a second. All right, yes. so uh, we are now on a motion to defer one meeting. All right, do I have discussion on that? Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting. Uh, it's been properly seconded. We're voting on the motion. All those in favor of the motion to defer, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. I got one no. Who uh, voted no? Welsh votes. Okay, Welsh votes no. Any abstentions? All right, the vote is 38 to, um, to 1 to 0. Uh, a motion is approved to defer one meeting. Um, last bill on the calendar, BL 2020 255 by Council Member Stiles. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by amending a specific plan property is located at 3141 Old Franklin Road, 4001 Cane Ridge Parkway, 4100 William Turner Parkway, and Cane Ridge Road unnumbered located on the north side of Old Franklin Road between Cane Ridge Road and Interstate 24 Zone AR2A and SP at 332.24 acres. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move for approval. I do have a substitute. Okay, so uh, you're going to need to move the substitute um, properly seconded. Uh, back to you for next. Oh, committee reports. I'm sorry. Okay, so planning and zoning. There is a committee report on this one. Uh, Council Member Murphy, planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy. Uh, planning and zoning, uh, 2020-255. So this was 15 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. All right, back to you, Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So this substitute, in essence, everything is the same. I'm, we're just adding the inclusion of two acres of common space, a common area that will be uninterrupted two acres within the project. All right, so I'm going to refer, defer to Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper. So, Council Member, you first need to move the substitute that the Planning Commission uh, approved and sent over to add the conditions. Then once, the, once that is, is done and, and that substitute is put on the bill, then you would need to suspend the rules to offer your late amendment to amend the substitute, the bill as substituted. Okay. So okay. Council, council so, Member Stiles. So move for approval on the substitute first. So right. I can do that, and then afterwards the late amendment. Got okay. it. Okay. So um, so the so motion. Like so the motion is to approve uh, the substitute. 
properly seconded. Uh, you've heard an explanation. Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Just very quickly, uh, the uh, Planning Commission, they approved the substitute. Uh, were, were they all in favor of that? I, I did not read that portion of it, so I, my, my fault, I didn't hear it in planning today. Mr. Mr. Cooper? Yes, it was approved by the Planning Commission. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Vice Thank Mayor. Council Member Glover. So the motion is to approve the substitute and properly seconded. Uh, nobody else in the queue. All those in favor of approving the substitute say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Okay, substitutes approved 39 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions. Any changes to that? All right, Council Member Stiles, you now have a late filed amendment on that substitute. Correct, and I would like to move for approval on my late file. And that is the language that includes the uninterrupted two acres of common space. Okay, so she's going to need to suspend the rules to get the late filed amendment on. So, Council Member Stiles, it's a late filed amendment, so you're going to need to suspend the rules to get the late filed amendment on in front of this body. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I request to respect to suspend the rules, please. Okay, so you've heard an explanation of the amendment. Is there objection to suspension of the rules? Okay, hearing none, Council Member Stiles, you're on your amendment to the substitute. I'd like to move for approval on the amendment. All right, so the motion is to approve uh, the amendment to the substitute. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment to the substitute? All right, seeing none, we're voting on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? All right, the vote is 39-4, zero against, zero abstentions on the uh, amendment to the substitute. Now, Council Member Stiles, you're on your substitute bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Okay, so uh, this is to approve BL 2020-255 as substituted, as amended. Uh, the motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. Uh, this is on third reading. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, we're voting on the bill on third reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Uh, who voted no? Rutherford. Uh, Rutherford voted no. Anybody else? Okay, any abstentions? So let me make sure I got the vote right. It's 38 to 1 to 0 with Council Member Rutherford being the only one to vote no. Anybody else? 38 to 1 to 0. Do I have that correct? Okay. That's the vote. The bill passes. Uh, substitute Bill 2020-255 uh, as amended passes on third reading. Um, I believe that's it. Um, I will um, entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. Thanks for using And so the council has concluded about a four and a half hour meeting. That's perhaps a little longer than was expected tonight since it was only a 10 page agenda, but there were a number of items that seem to bedevil the council, particularly on a number of memorializing resolutions. Those are resolutions that don't have any real force of law. Generally, has the council going on record asking somebody to do something, or in some cases, asking themselves to abide by their, their wishes on a particular matter. Uh, the, the bill that perhaps was the most interest tonight, or two bills, was the, the tax levy, which contains a 32 percent property tax increase that Mayor Cooper is recommending, along with a budget that's several billion dollars. The council had those on second reading tonight. They did not take action on. They never do on second reading before the council holds its public hearing on the budget and the tax levy. That will be held on June 2nd. That will be the next council meeting. But we did get some in, in, in information tonight that uh, had been talked about before about how the at least the council's budget committee looks like it's going to proceed. 
one of the things that's going to add into the, into the, uh, the, the, the budget this year is a requirement to have a COVID-19 oversight committee that will get into an issue that uh, is bedeviling the council a little bit right now in terms of how to handle the federal money coming in. Right now, the federal money that is coming in because of COVID-19 cannot be used to balance the budget. But uh, th there is some money out there, $121 million, that the council approved accepting that grant from the federal government tonight. They didn't approve spending it at this point. They want to plan for that. And there's a little bit of a misunderstanding or some controversy about that today. The mayor apparently had indicated he is going to have a group to help him uh, with that area, consulting with him. But apparently the mayor now says that that's really to try to get more money from the state, not necessarily more money from the federal government or how to spend that money. The council wants to have its own group to take a look at that. And also, eventually, there's going to be a plan that will come to the council to do that. So that was the, the big issue tonight. And the other issue that the council wants to look at in terms of this co coming with the budget is they want to put in the budget the idea that the finance director would report back to the council by August 15th about what the revenue situation is. It appears the budget and finance committee is looking at setting a tax rate. Uh, they have to do that by law by the end of June, but it can still be changed and amended uh, by sometime by before the 1st of September. Of course, it'll have to be changed again by an ordinance, so the council might have to have several special meetings. They're asking by August 15th for the finance director to come in and present to them a, a plan of what the revenues are right now, what, what revenues might be there. For example, the federal government might decide there's at least proposals in Congress that would allow state and local governments to use uh, federal monies, COVID monies, to, uh, to balance the budget. That's not allowed right now, but if it changes, that may be an opportunity to take whatever tax rate is put in, the property tax rate being increased by 32% of the mayor's plan, to take that down a little bit, to take some relief for that, so the, the, the rate would not, might not be as much or might not be at all, depending on the amount of money that's available. So that's what the council is looking at. Again, that's a lot of ifs and buts. There'd have to be probably at least three special council meetings to take care of that uh, as, it, as it moves forward. The council had a number of bills before tonight that uh, spoke to what's going on with the COVID-19 and with the budget situation. They uh, defeated a bill uh, that was offered by Councilman at Large Steve Glover that would give him some credit for the property and business taxes being paid by companies and businesses that were shut down because of COVID-19. Uh, this was amended to say this would be, if, if money was available, that Metro might do this, if it's so, if it's so fit to do that. Most council members felt that was sort of a false promise to even go that far, so they defeated the bill 15-4, 18 against, and six abstentions. One of the bill they passed tonight that, uh, actually the one they defeated tonight, was a resolution that would declare the intent of the Metro Council not to approve any further economic development incentive awards for a period of one year, and then not even after that until metrics were established to regarding the awarding of such incentives that they really work. A lot of council members, particularly those who've been to the council before, feel like they do work and uh, didn't think this was a good idea to, to turn down the idea of economic incentives, particularly considering how the employment situation has changed in Davidson County just over the last month because of COVID-19. So that resolution paid on 14 4, 20 against with four abstentions. A lot of other bills, they had a lot of problems tonight with the technical issues because of this, again, this, this uh, kind of meeting they're having, these uh, virtual meetings that they're having, and also the voting system here is still not working as well as they'd like to, so that led to perhaps a few more elongated uh, votes being taken uh, with roll calls and trying to use the system that at one point during the meeting didn't appear to be working at all. The council is now in recess until the month of June. They'll be meeting three times in the month of June. They'll be meeting on the 2nd, on the 9th, and on the 16th. On the 16th is when they're planning right now to have the third and final reading on the budget. On the 2nd, we'll have the public hearing on the on the budget and on the tax levy and also on the capital improvements budget which is a spending plan but the one that also the council has a public hearing on by law uh, we'll see what happens i think the public hearing on the budget will predict and tax decrease will be quite a long one it'll be the first time it's been done on a virtual basis and that itself could be very interesting to watch to see what happens we'll be here at that line and we'll be there at that time to provide live coverage until then good night from the council chambers Tonight's Metro Council meeting has been a public affairs presentation. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.